Hey, welcome to Zipper Social Club. This is the 10K celebration. Um, we got a couple brewers cracked tonight. Joining me, some awesome good friends. You know Rob, Whiskey in the Six. Um, our good friend Jasper, he brought the brewer 35 tonight. And on my left, Devin. Um, you might know him from uh, Spirit um, and Oak. He has a, a little um, weekly newsletter he puts out. Um, he actually helped acquire my Brora. So we'll get into that story later. Um, lots of stuff going on in the show tonight. We got giveaways, giving away a sample of the Brora. We got bottles to give away. Um, Rob and I are going to do the semi blind dartboard uh, challenge. Lots of awesome stuff. Um, another special guest we have with us is our good friend from Malt Reviews. Narby, Narby, say hi, man. How's it going tonight? What's happening, everybody? Thanks for having me on, man. Congrats on 10K. <laughs> Thank you. Um, really, you're the one you should be tell celebrating 10K. Your guys' channel reviews some just crazy, crazy whiskey. Um, you guys have been an idol of mine on the whiskey tube community for a long time. Um, Really, you guys started about, what, four years ago, you and Mike, um, I remember your very first review, it was the Delmore 50. I remember seeing that and just falling in love with, like, your compassion and your, you know, uh, love for whiskey and how much you guys really enjoyed that bottle. Yeah, we, you know, we started getting into whiskey about, like, a little over 10, definitely over 10 years ago. Even when, uh, you know, like even in college, when everyone was drinking beer and stuff, I was sipping on, sipping on whiskey back then, just regular stuff, and just kind of grew into a super, super passion, and we just kept buying like a bottle a week, and from there, we wanted to go on this journey of finding the absolute best whiskeys of the world, and didn't matter what we had to do, we just constantly trying to acquire the best bottles and search for the best whiskey in the world. So uh, that's why you see a lot of the, the higher end bottles on our channel. Yeah, you guys have very uh, <laughs> succeeded pretty well in doing <laughs> that, I would assume. You guys bring bottles to, you know, the whiskey tube that no one else is doing. And I think that's really why I love your channel, because we get to, the, you know, live kind of vicariously through you guys and see you know, the upper echelons of these rare, rare malts that uh, you can only really find in auctions. And um, I love your guys' channel. Now, I just have one thing I want to share with you. I don't know if you remember this. I um, remember commenting. I remember I was one of the very first commenters ever on your channel oh, when, really? you guys, when you guys brought it up. I don't know if I have. I thought I saved the comment. Yeah, here it is. Um, I'll share this <laughs> in the thing here. Hold on. Give me one second. Sure. So this was on your almost this almost four years ago, back when I had my uh, little stupid haircut <laughs> uh, icon. So just um, about four years ago, this was your um, Delmore Fifty review, and just okay. saying how much I love. This was my third time watching it. I've probably watched that review maybe like seven times. And uh, I love your response. This is, you know, the best comment. Uh, thanks, Bobby. Wish you had more of this. And you guys definitely delivered on uh, bringing out just awesome, awesome uh, whiskeys from then on. I mean, you got, you set the bar so high with that. Uh, do you remember what you scored that whiskey? At the time, we scored it at 96. I don't know how much lower it would be now, just because we tried so many crazy, crazy whiskey scents. Yeah, I think you did score it. Um, I think I wrote down what you scored it. I scored. I think we scored it at ninety six at that time. But I think you were ninety six and Mike was ninety seven on that. Wow, I can guarantee you, you wouldn't give it a ninety seven now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Oh shoot, we got a super chat. Oh my god, Rob. Rob is not allowed to give super chats. <laughs> <laughs> Guests are not allowed to give super chats. Rob does what he wants. But uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll throw a gong here. I said, let's get this itch popping because YouTube wouldn't allow me to put bitch. <laughs> so I don't know. All right. So 
we've got some awesome whiskey in front of us. Let's just talk about that real quick. Um, Barora, 35 year old, 38 year old. Um, one is the 15th release. The other is the 13th release. 30, 35 year old is a 13th release. 38 year old is a 15th release. Um, now, Narby, correct me if I'm wrong. These are cast strength bottling. So, is that right? Yeah, those are those are cast strength bottlings. One of them is that you have there's a 1978 vintage, and the other one's a 77 vintage. Yeah, so the 38 year old is a 77 vintage. The 35 year old is a 78 vintage. Um, yeah. Both exactly the same ABV though. So that's why we were just wondering. Cast strength. 48.6 on both of these. Very interesting. I, you know what? There's a chance I might be wrong, but I just can't see them not bottling those at cask strength. It's just, it would, it would surprise me, especially with the low number of releases. Yeah. Um, bottles produced, I think, just under 3,000 for both of these. Uh, 2984 for the 38 and 2964 for the 35. Yeah. Um, you know, when it comes what to the behind that. Yeah, sorry, go ahead, Narby. When it comes to Broras, the vintage matters a lot. They they change things a lot uh, with Klein Leash. And then eventually when they opened up the new distillery, which was called Klein Leash 2 in 1969, the essentially the first Klein Leash that was opened became named Brora. And the new one took the old name, which is Klein Leash. It's kind of weird and confusing, but um, that makes any sense. In 1969, they essentially opened up another Klein Leash, and the old Klein Leash became Brora. Right. They were going to call it, I think, what, Klein Leash 2? And instead of having two Klein Leash distilleries, they were just like, let's just name the old Klein Leash Brora, and then the new distillery would be called uh, Klein Leash. Yeah, and they did that because of export reasons. Right. Okay. Makes sense. Um, real quick, let's get into the chat. Let's see who's here. Uh, Donner Pass is in, Vito, Santa Cruz in, uh, Mike's in the chat, Kevin, what's up, man? Um, Jason Fisk, Chris David's in the chat, um, Catherine, what's going on? Sean, Jason Coates, lots of the regular uh, people in the chat tonight. Go Habs is here. Who else we got, guys? You ever see anyone else in the chat? I'm trying to see. Uh, Moose Chun's in the house. CamDoc33. I'm not sure if I've seen you before. Welcome. Mash and Drum. What's up, Jason? Uh, Mark's here. Benjamin's here. Loch Ness. Blake. Uh, Eric Waits in. What's going on, man? I think Vito's. Rob's in the chat. <laughs> I think Whiskey. Vito's calling us weathered. <laughs> he's like, he's like, both Super Social Club and Whiskey in the Six look like they went hard AF back in their day last night at the NASA. What's he talking? What's about? <laughs> <laughs> this is that when you get the screen cap and you're talking, the picture that you have is that old picture with like the frosty yeah. hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, <laughs> uh, Jason just sent a super chat. Thank you, sir. Little gong for you. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, so what's up, boys? What are you guys, how are you guys feeling tonight? I'm a little jittery. Like, I feel like I'm on a first date, right? It's like, it was so nervous, like, cracking these bottles. Because there's like, Narby, this is a question for you. Do you guys ever have, like, anxiety about opening something? You ever have, like, buyer's remorse when you throw down big money on an auction? What's the process for you guys when you're bringing home an epic, epic bottle? I think we lost him. And we lost him. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wonder if he does have, we'll try to get him back. I wonder if he does have anxiety like that. Or if he just like, fuck it, let's just open this and go. Yeah. It seems like that's kind of their mentality, right? He won't realize that we lost him until like right now. Okay. Because it's a 10 second <laughs> delay. Because he's, he's flipped on the phone all right well hopefully we'll get them back um but yeah what do you guys think like for me it, there was some anxiety opening these what about you yeah, jasper i'm excited yeah right? <laughs> you buy these whiskeys you want to share them you want to drink them you want to share them with people who know what they're drinking right, right? so 
I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited because it's not my bottle. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, so real quick, let's just tell a story about acquiring this bottle for me because yeah. you were the one who did the leg work. Um, we got it from the SAQ in Montreal. Uh, oh, Cam Doc with another super chat. Thank you, sir. Ten dollars for ten k. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Uh, That's a theme that can. Oh, Richard. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Thank you, sir. Fifty. Nice. Is that that should be maybe like five gongs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More than one for sure. Five. Five gongs. Do it. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it's going to hear on the, the, the microphone kind of. It's going to be a gong show tonight, regardless. Um, okay, so acquiring this Bro 38. You, oh, yeah, almost yeah. not acquiring this Bro 38. <laughs> so I had a Highland Park 30 year old that I wanted to exchange for something else. LCBO didn't have any in stock, so I couldn't exchange it here. Uh, the SAQ in Quebec did have some brewers in stock. Yeah. So you were kind enough to take my bottle, looking to exchange. Oh, we got Narby back. Yeah, guys, sorry. Well, give me one second. All right, yeah, no problem. Um, so I gave you the Highland Park 30. Mm -hmm. You took it to Montreal. Mm -hmm. Explain the process of what, how, how it went down. Well, the process was walking into the store and asking them for this bottle. And we had checked the stock beforehand. Um, so pretty confident, and I know you were super stoked about getting this bottle, of course. Yeah. And your heart probably sank when I messaged you like ten minutes later, being like, "Dude, they can't find the bottle. It's not there." <laughs> yeah, and it was like, "No." And so, on my end, I'm talking to these um, people who are helping me try to find this bottle, and they were searching the back. And they told me that um, they had like a warehouse guy who had to come in at six o'clock, and he was the only one who could locate the bottle. And so they essentially sent me away empty handed. Right. And yeah. And then you called them. And the very <laughs> next day, they magically found the bottle. And so luckily, we were able to pick it up. On yeah. So what happened was like when I called the store, they essentially were like, oh, the person that's in charge of inventory or whatever is not yeah. here. We don't know where the bottles are. I'm like, you guys don't know where $2,600 <laughs> bottles are in your store. It's like just typical. <laughs> government run stuff anyway yeah, um, so yeah thing. luckily when I called back the next day I'm like I want to come in and get this you have it and like yeah so I think they put one aside right yeah okay. and then um, it was smooth sailing after that we picked it up and yeah so it. that's how that's yeah. how that it came to be so um, definitely wanted to have Devin over tonight to uh, share in this experience because since he did all the all the hard lifting for this bottle. Yeah, I drove uh, all the way to Quebec just for that. Right? Yeah, <laughs> was like, just for the guy whiskey. It's like, that's, we drive great distances together. I, I'm not sure why we can't unmute Narby now. Okay, so Narby, you muted him. Un okay, so un unclick your box there, and I'll try. It's not working. Like that. Narby, can you hear us? No, we've got you muted. Rob muted you, and now we can get, you can't get you back. So, <laughs> but that makes no sense. Don't do that. <laughs> um, so what do we do? Eject him and bring him back? Yeah, tell him to come back. And then... All right, now we're going to have to eject you and bring you back because Rob hit the mute button on you and now we can't unmute you. So Sorry, we're going to have to redo it again. Sorry, man. My bad. <laughs> do I have to give a new link now? No, it should be fine. Right? It should be okay. All right. Um, so Jasper, what, you want to tell a story about how you acquired your bottle? It's probably because I acquired mine that you couldn't get yours. Right. Yeah. Right? <laughs> exact same story. Had a Highland Park 30. Thought I'd rather have that Aurora. Mm -hmm. Right. And same thing. Went to the store, asked for it. They did. It's behind the the glass. You know how LCBO has this glassed off area for their other bottles. Yeah. Couldn't find the key, couldn't get the code, finally got in. I want that bottle, not that bottle. Finally got there, but yeah. It's got to um, always be the most anxiety-driven <laughs> moments of your life. Like, it's like everything takes forever to get, can't find the key. Yeah. 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 The worst part of no that is that. it's behind glass, so you can yeah. see it, and you yeah. just can't get through. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I found the key, they couldn't get the code. They couldn't get in. <laughs> right. Well, 
either way, it doesn't really matter yeah. how we got them. We got them. And uh, oh, Kevin, cheers, man. How's it going? It's not even for you. It's for Rob. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Rob was going to bring his little jabroni doll tonight, but he forgot. I told him oh, to. Oh, no. Here I am trying to do a nice thing, putting him on mute so that it doesn't keep flickering back and forth while yeah, we're now trying we've to lost, tell the story. Now we've lost Narby forever, thanks to Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I kind of wanted to get Narby back before we start getting yeah, into this. Definitely got to get Narby back. So we'll wait a couple seconds. Um, I'm gonna let start me just, nosing my water. Soon. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know your water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let you know uh, what you guys can win tonight because we got lots of things to give away. Um, a sample of the Brewer 38, a one ounce sample of that. That's coming later. Um, I'm gonna give away a bottle. And it's gonna be uh, the winner's choice. You're gonna either choose between Lot 40 Cast Strength. This is the 11 year old second edition. A bottle of Weather Antique 107, or a Deanston 2008 Birdo cask. That's really white. Anyway, <laughs> that is going to be the giveaway. Uh, winner's choice, one of these bottles is going home with one of you tonight. That's coming later as well. And then, of course, if you've uh, seen the lives before, we do the blind uh, dartboard challenge where we give away uh, samples from that and glasses as well. That's all coming later as well. Who do we got? Can we read that comment? Them. Oh, is there a new link? Send them a new link. Oh, okay. shit. Okay. Um, they want to know if um, Jasper is your porn name. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it gets some brewer in there. <laughs> yeah, he has a secret life to afford whiskey. Like we all do. <laughs> there's, three, there's two tripods in the room. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Um all right, well okay. I'm gonna send Narvi a new link. So Rob, oh, why don't you tell the people where you were at tonight if you want? So I was at Last Straw Distillery before this, uh at a private tasting. Since um, Rob is such a whiskey jet setter, he goes from one event to another. Yeah. Across, <laughs> across uh, the city. Um, we tried their rye that's coming out, I believe this summer, it, in three different ABVs. So 43%, 46%, and cast strength. Uh, it tasted excellent in all three. It's aged in virgin char number three American oak casks, 100% uh, rye, and I think you guys are going to be pretty impressed. I brought some if you want to taste it after. Yeah, we'll get into that maybe after because that is kind of cool. Um, so what's their plan, like, releasing stuff like that? So they had myself, Blair, who's a very um, – right now he works with um, Davin de Caramel or whatever, however you pronounce his last name, um, quite a bit, writing books, uh, Canadian whiskey books in particular. And uh, Brian from Toronto Whiskey Society, you guys know him. Too. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was there as well. Okay. There's a few other guys that are getting samples, and yeah, we all had to vote on our favorite. Mm. What was the winner? So we all, I mean, we all really like the 43 percent. Uh, I chose the cash strength to edge that out because I like to kind of toy with it myself. Mm -hmm. uh, but the other two chose the 43, and that was my second favorite. Okay. So I mean, the 43 is great. 43 is absolutely excellent. They are going to like keep it unchill filtered. They're not going to add any color or anything like that. So you're getting something different still at 43% than you would any other Canadian whiskey. That's great. So they're looking for feedback from the community as to what to release, how to release it, or... Yeah, just some that, advice as yeah. to what we think tastes best and right. and then run with it. There's only, like, they're only going to yield, if they go at 43, they're only going to yield probably about just over just under 300 or just over 300 bottles. Mm -hmm. So um, it'll probably sell out quick, especially, yeah. you know, the fact that there's so many people involved in, in helping pick it and it'll get some exposure. Well, still no Narby. Um, so we'll <laughs> keep waiting for him. Um, let's, let's just get into it. Cause Narby's had many brewers before. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you won't mind if we, uh, start nosing until uh gets back so what do you want to start with 35 38 
think it's 35. 35 yeah. start. Yeah. All right, so 35 is your distilled glasses. Um, I've only had one other brewer. It was an independent bottle, um, distilled 1974. I think it was around 28 years old or so. Now I know why like so many people love Klein Leash so much, right? Like you do like, like it does you get that in a Klein Leash, you'll get like some of that briny oily oily like laxy fruits. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. It's got a bright, very bright fruitiness to it. Apple leaf kind yeah. of it is so vibrant, it's isn't it? Surprising after thirty five years. It doesn't right? not it smells a lot younger. Yeah, I would, I would assume that there's probably some pretty tired casks used in, in aging mm -hmm. this, right? Because you're getting a lot of the distillery characteristic out of it, mm -hmm. even after 35 years. I've never had a bro. <laughs> no, but I mean, <laughs> you've had Klein yeah. Leash, right? So, like, there is that similarity, right? I think, anyway. It's identical. Like, you could definitely get the similarities between the Klein Leash and this. Now I can start smelling the age to this. It's like old, just like dusty notes. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark's saying that he can't believe that he won uh, my first Taste My Bar nine months ago. Uh, Major Conchman to get the 10,000 subs. Yeah. Joe, you should, should, should have uh, chosen the Dark Cove. What did you choose? I kind of forget now what you chose in that one. I think it was Dark, it was a Dark Cove committee release, I think was up for grabs, but he passed. Um, Reviews coming up soon, uh, our big Dark Cove versus Dark Cove community release. That'll be out next week. All right, so Narvi's saying that it, it says he's not allowed to join this call, probably because we banned him. <laughs> um, Do you have another? Give me another email address. Email, yeah. No, I don't know that, yeah, does that work though? Cause it should. It was a count. Over and grab yeah, Narby, just uh, send a reply with maybe uh, give me a link to a different email address, and then I'll bring it back in. It doesn't make sense that it wasn't able to unmute. Like, right. But... If you can just copy that link, do you, do you uh, have Instagram on your computer? Um, then you can just drop it in an Instagram chat, and then you can just click that. And do it through there. Yeah. I'll try that. Or Twitter, if he has Twitter. I don't have. To, I don't have. Well, I do have Twitter, but I never use it. So, what are your thoughts? The nose is beautiful. It is beautiful. Does it still feel it's like it needs to open up a lot more? I still feel like it does. Yeah. Well, yeah. Since it said like the bright fruit thing, I'm getting a lot of kind of deeper. And when you, it's got that dusty. Like opening up a piano <laughs> kind of note. I can't believe how much it reminds me of the cleanliness that I've actually tasted, though. Like, I'm actually shocked at how much it reminds me of that. We popped these, what, over an hour ago? They were sitting here when I got here. Okay. Yeah, so we opened these up at quarter after eight. So it's been an hour and 10 minutes they've been open. But yeah, it still feels like it opened up a lot more. I can't do a uh, messaging through this. I do I message them? <laughs> Block. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Not sure what's going on. You sent an email. Let's see. When I was talking to Narby today, he was like, get ready to smell the sweetest, nicest manure you've ever smelled before. <laughs> yeah. Cow shit. <laughs> I'm not getting manure. It's all beautiful right now. <laughs> yeah, that's really nice. I'm definitely getting some kind of... Yeah, drop the line right there. Mm. Uh, yes, yes. And there you go. Yeah. Right. There, I, tell him to click that link. I can see where the barn comes from, that the farm. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting the manure yet. Maybe after I taste it. <laughs> there you go. He's on. Like crap. Yeah. Are we back? Uh, All right. Yeah, yeah. Let me just set it up real quick. 
Yeah, yeah, sure. All right. That was Rob's fault. <laughs> <laughs> Darby, I tried to do you a favor because you were setting up the camera. <laughs> Now my iPhone's all messed up. I tried to do you a favor because you were setting up the camera. Got something rolling there. That's from Narby's side. Ah, pretty sure. Yeah. All right. Are you good? Can you guys hear me? See me? All right. I think you think you're good. So I think I think my bad. I think what happened was I was trying to because I seen everything on delay, so I was getting confused. So I was trying to sign on with another phone, and then I might have messed everything up. Okay. Yeah, no worries. We got you back. Um, before we lost you, um, we were just talking about opening these Broras and kind of like the anxiety that I personally had, like cracking this bottle. And my question to you was, you guys get crazy, crazy bottles. Do you ever have buyer's remorse? Uh, you're, are you anxious opening something? Um, what's your process when you get an Epic whiskey and open it for the first time? Every time it's like a kid at, at Disneyland, you know, it's um, Mike and I usually do it together whenever it's a special bottle. It's like kind of one of the funnest things to do the same way you guys do it. That's why I enjoy watching you guys so much because I can relate. But of course, every once in a while, you know, you have such expect high expectations. Every once in a while, there's buyer remorse, but we feel like we know kind of how to research and what to look for who to listen to. So we're pretty good at kind of figuring it out. Um, just the same way as you guys are as well. But uh, always a super, super, super special occasion. You know, I get the butterflies every time. Yeah, that's uh, I, the one thing I like about your channel too is your philosophy about how you are opening like all these bottles you get. You're not just someone who buys something crazy and takes an Instagram photo of it, completely sealed with no real attention of cracking it, maybe ever. Um, and I think that, I mean, Rob and I definitely took a page from your book on that, as far as everything should be opened and enjoyed and yeah. shared with uh, with people who like whiskey and appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, uh, absolutely. <clears throat> agree one million percent. Now, we open, most of our bottles, but we definitely don't open all our bottles. I have quite a few bottles that are not open, but they, they eventually will get open. You know, I have, believe it or not, I've never flipped a bottle before. And wow. There's some crazy, crazy closed bottles, but I have, I've never sold a bottle. Wow, wow. That's impressive. <laughs> that is very impressive. Because <laughs> a lot of times, I mean, like, what I'll do is I'll, sometimes I'll buy two. Um, I know I did it with the uh, teapot drams, the Glen Glen teapot drams. I brought over you know, a couple bottles with the intention of, you know, selling one to kind of recuperate my costs um, for the other ones. Yeah. Um, and I'll do that, but I'm not the kind of person that's going to go out and purchase whiskey just for the sole point of making a profit off of it. No. I'll try to subsidize my costs a bit, but I'm not going to go out and uh, buy up, you know, the entire stock of a store and then just immediately put it on the secondary market. Look, I, I absolutely have nothing against... Uh selling it selling a bottle that you know you have absolutely every right to and i probably eventually will just because i have some bottles that are worth such insane amounts and i didn't necessarily buy them for even close to the price it's worth so you know it would probably be smart at some point to to do something like that uh, i don't have kids yet so i think my priorities might change when i have kids and uh might want to buy a home and stuff like that but so far all i've cared about is Focusing on whiskey. I'm really <laughs> kids more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jasper's like, once you have kids, you'll be wanting that all that whiskey is still around. Um, <laughs> speaking of whiskey, um, let us know what do you got? What do you got going there? What do you got? Uh, what do you got in front right. of you? You guys want to see all all the bottles that I have out, um, and then you can kind of go from there. Or you want me to just kind of bring them like three at a time? Yeah. Well, yeah. Just do three at a time. What do you got on the table, and then um, share what else you got. All right, so right now I'm sipping on this Klein Leash 21-year-old cast strength. This is a whiskey exchange pick. Very nice. And then I also have this 21-year-old spring bank by the whiskey company. And this is aged in port, but you'd be shocked how crazy good this is. Now, is that the uh, Boutique Whiskey Company? Because it looks like the art. The, the, the Boutique Whiskey Company, correct. Okay. 
Now, you guys did a review on one like that for a McAllen, I believe it was, right? We did. We just we, we actually did this one, and we've done a, a couple of the McAllen ones. The thirty-year-old McAllen one of this is probably a top five McAllen I've ever tried. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I remember you guys were really loved on that. Uh, it was a twenty-five-year-old McAllen, wasn't it? I think for that boutique. There's, there's a twenty-five-year-old we did. I think we did a twenty-six-year-old and a thirty-year-old. Wow. Do wow. you think that that independent bottler really hits home runs with everything they do? Have you had something that's not up to snuff from them, or? Um, they are in. The, this was like, this this bottle right here still is one of the best bottles you should be getting at an auction. But they're they were trying to create a big name for themselves, so they were just putting out the best of the best. Now I'm seeing the quality drop a little bit. And that's what a lot of people do when they're new and they're trying to make a name for themselves. Kind of like when Glenn Drona did in the beginning when they were releasing those single casts. And then the quality started kind of getting mixed up a little. Some were good, some were bad. But in the beginning, almost all of them were really good. So they're just trying to establish a name for themselves. And so now it's kind of hit or miss, but they used to just almost all be epic. Yeah, you're giving Jasper some hints over here. <laughs> the, the third bottle I have here is a half bottle. It's a 33-year-old single cask of Highland Park. Wow. wow. That's crazy. Yeah. 33-year-old single cask. You don't see that many old independent bottles of Highland Park, do you? This is from Highland Park. Oh, it's an official bottle. Oh, okay. That's cool. It's an official bottle, yeah. It's, um, it's uh, from the Ambassador Cask series, so there's four different bottles, and this is the third one. This is, like, super, super fruity. It's almost like... Juicy fruit gum. There's like all kinds of fruit. It's just you don't want to swallow it. It's unbelievable. Wow. <laughs> that that one out of I mean, I love that part. It's, it's, <laughs> you got Rob drooling over here. Oh. I don't know what which one on that. I mean, the Spring Bank 21 that we just tried yesterday. Well, we tried it the oh, other night as well. Here too. Is it this one? Yeah, it's that one. The port rum. Yeah. yeah. It's it's bonkers good. Like, I yeah. think it's phenomenal. So I can just imagine what a 21 year old cast strength import would be like. Yeah. Th this, this one is crazy. Um, I got a, I, I definitely got a backup of this one. Uh, if you like that dry, dry style sherry, which I know you guys do from watching you guys' Mortlock review, you guys would love this. Yeah. Nice. I do love that Mortlock. That was great whiskey. Um, so, all yeah, right, so what else? What else you got? I mean, <laughs> all right. Um, and then I'll show you what else I have. Since I wanted to bring, I want to bring whiskeys out that we haven't reviewed yet. Um, so I have a forty-eight-year-old Longmore by Gordon and McPhail, a nineteen sixty-four vintage. <laughs> wow. Wow. Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, this one is super, super dark. Super Did you fill that up with espresso before you <laughs> went live? Or? Say it again? I said, did you fill that up with espresso before you came live? Or? You know what? There's a, lot, there's a lot of espresso notes in there. Um, and I know you guys love uh, independent bottlers lately. Here's a Caden Head 28-year-old Highland Park. Also really, really dark and sherry. Yeah. Jeez, damn. No, 1964 is like a known year for for spirits. What what about that year is makes everything so good? Like I know you guys did that that um, Bowmore from '64 that you really liked. There was something else from '64 as well. Yeah, that that Bowmore from '64 is one of the ten whiskey whiskeys I've ever tried. Um, '64, I, you know, I really don't know what the answer is and why it's such a legendary year, like 1972. 1958 and 64 those are like the years that really really come to mind i don't know why i i really really don't know why that is what was going on during those you know those vintage years but they're definitely famous for a reason yeah i mean i don't we haven't had anything from those years i mean the oldest vintage year i've had is 74 um and i think 74 a lot of people talk about 74 as being a decent year too you said 72 but um, yeah, it just, I don't know what it was back then, but method, cast selection, whatever, just good year for barley. I don't know. There's so many, or there's so many more people buying whiskey now that like 
quality is being spread so thin, I think. That's right. the problem. Whereas yeah. back then, there was a lot less people buying scotch. So you're not there's a, the competition for high quality casks wasn't as high, right? right? Yeah, yeah. And there's, there's a big difference between aging whiskey in an actual sherry cask, something that aged sherry for 30, 40 years, and then you age whiskey in it versus just grabbing a regular fresh cask, throwing some sherry in it for a few months, dumping it, and then aging whiskey in it. Right. Yeah. Um, EBB head in the chat is saying that Glendronic 93 is like a talked about year. And I think you mentioned something about uh, to me as well, those single casts from 93 from Glendronic are supposed to be pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. So it's 60, 68 and 72 are extremely famous years for Glendronic. Those are like the wow, wow, wow Glendronics. And then the 93s is kind of like coming in like third place where uh, you can get some value with those, where with the 72s and 68s, you have to pay thousands and thousands of dollars now. Have you acquired some of those 93 Glendronics recently or... I, I probably have about 20 of them. So, yes, you did. I, uh, yeah, I have, I have a few of the 68s and 70, 72s as well. I wish I'd bought more, but, you know, I was getting those at original price. Right. Wow. Yeah. So, like, just a couple hundred bucks, right? Like, they're not too expensive at retail. Well, the, the 60, no, it's so, so paying. The 93s, the 93s I was talking about. The, yeah, the 93s, I was paying anywhere from 150 to like 250 bucks. Right. Yeah. So very, very doable. Um, since um, should, Let me show the last couple bottles. This is a 1958 Highland Park, 18-year-old. This is an Italian import by Highland Park, and this is also like coffee color. This is some of the best Highland Park ever released. Jesus. The color on that. That's well, it's, like Jägermeister. It's, yeah. <laughs> the glass is actually not tinted. It's stained. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, go and ahead. And then last, last but not least, I have one of the best spring banks. Since I, you know, had to bring out a spring bank for you guys. This is a 1965 Moon Import. That's crazy. Now, I think, yeah, have you shown that on your channel before, that bottle? Well, we reviewed cast 363. This is 367. This one's okay. even more famous. And this went on auction a couple months ago. And it uh, went for $9,300. Wow. It's a four-hour flight to Cali right now. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so we're going to stop the live stream and just come uh, crash your party. Um, you know, you <laughs> If you guys have not subscribed to Malt Refuse, the link is in the description. Get over there and get on these guys' videos. They're reviewing stuff that you've never even heard of before. But go look at Whiskey Base. Go look at their top 100. These guys are reviewing every single ball that's on there. Um, absolutely magical, magical stuff. I feel like they should change the name of their channel to the Unicorn Whiskey. Yeah, Unicorn Whiskey <laughs> Review. <laughs> Mike and Narvi. <laughs> you know... You know, you know what's weird is there's another channel, I guess that's Malt Review, and we're Malt Reviews. I don't know who started first. I think you guys did. They they're pretty new, I believe. Okay, okay. Because I was just like, I hope I didn't copy someone's name because we just, you know, we just randomly wanted to do some YouTube videos just to like have video proof of all these whiskeys we're drinking. We're like literally doing it for ourselves. Yeah. Well, I you guys that. don't even monetize, right? Like the well, you haven't been for a very long time. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you know, as you know, we don't have very many subscribers. We don't make an effort in, in, in getting more. And we review whiskeys where only guys like you guys know about. Most people don't care what this spring bank is, you know. People are going to care about a Glen Fiddick 12 bottle a lot more than this because it takes a whiskey enthusiast to uh, appreciate stuff like that. That's yeah, true. especially, I mean, you're not going to walk into a shelf and find any of those bottles, right? I mean, especially shops, auctions only. Um, so it really does only play to the upper echelon of, of whiskey drinkers, I think. But a lot of people can get a lot of value from your videos because, like me, you know, I was just just starstruck. And the, the passion you guys have really comes off in your reviews. I think that's what I like most about it. Um, and you're exposing whiskeys to people that, you know, they may never try, they may never see. It's just kind of like a legend, um, and you're kind of bringing that to the real world, and that's why I, I love your channel. Yeah. Yeah. You know what it was when we first started, and we were, like, talking to uh, 
some of those legendary collectors and uh and we would read reviews like you know on whiskey fun with surge we're like imagine if surge did these bottles on video like how cool would it be to see it on video and i'm not comparing us to that in any way where we have nowhere near the experience but we're like let's put some of this stuff in video because i haven't seen anyone else do it but that's kind of where the idea started from yeah i love that and i love to just like having that like catalog of like history that's kind of like i like doing my reviews like my written ones that i started with Toronto whiskey society it's just i can look back and be like okay this is what i like thought of it this is what i scored it it's interesting to go back and see that later on in life i think well he talks about like not having a lot of sub like subscribers and whatever but you and i have been referred to as mike and narby light <laughs> yeah. or like mike and poor man's mike North. and narby yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> we are the poor man's more reviews for sure <laughs> you know can I, can I say something about you guys? It's been so cool watching you guys because I feel like you're going through like a similar journey I went on, except you perhaps started a few years after. And watching you guys do like the McAllen 18s and the Glendron 18s and those being like really high end, especially you, Rob, you've been doing your channel for a while. And now all of a sudden you've grown like immune to getting a thousand dollar bottle where like before you would probably say there's no way I'll ever buy a thousand dollar bottle. So I can just relate so much watching you guys' journey, and uh, I'm a huge fan of you guys as well, of course. Yeah, I mean, I remember um, purchasing Highland Park 25 year old for 400 bucks and thinking, that's it. I can't go any higher yeah. ever in my life. This is the most expensive bottle I'll ever buy. And now it's just like 400 bucks seems like a deal for something. Uh, kind of depends on what it is, but yeah, it's just craziness. Yeah, I mean, I bought a like before I started my channel. I bought a Glenlivet twenty five year old for three hundred and fifty bucks for my son's birth, and I was like, "Wow, I can't believe I spent that." And like people were coming over my house, and I was like, trying to have to like justify it to them, like, "Yeah, this is an expensive bottle." My son was like born, whatever. It's kind of a big deal, um, but like now, if I had to relive that moment, it would be like, yeah, like like this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's just a Friday night live stream this bottle. Is a, yeah. <laughs> like what? How could I replay that? Like, after, like, if they ever go back and watch my channel, they'll be like, You opened the what for my birthday? Like, <laughs> I know, right? It's like, <laughs> Why did you chase out of my bottle? Like, what the heck? Um, so, sorry, I've been sneaking sips of this. We, I, yeah, I've just been drinking, so just drinking and talking. Uh, so, we're into the 35. That's what we're going, we're working on right now. The vibrancy on this, I think, is, is crazy to think about. 35 year old whiskey being this like mm -hmm. it smells younger than than it is in my opinion right like whereas did you sniff the 38 yet? not yet no the 38 smells its age like it smells right. old no. like it, you get that dusty like dank uh dunnage type like smell yeah. whereas the the 35 you get a lot of fruit it's mm -hmm. salty it's got that like like i said i couldn't believe how much client like how much it reminded me of the clan leash that I actually tasted. It's like I've been here before kind yeah. of thing. You know what I mean? Mm. Although, I mean, obviously it's amped up next level. It's really, really nice. Right. Can I, can I just say something about those bottles you have right there? Out of any bottle you've ever purchased, this will change with air more than anything else. Mm. So, so, you know, you're really not going to experience it today. And, and, and I feel like heavily shared whiskeys, you pop it open. It's just epic from the get go. It might improve, it might not. But bottles like that, they really, really, really change. And no nothing's going to change more than those Broras. So you guys are in for like a cool adventure. Now, what do you think about adding water to Broras? You've experimented with that before. I do have my dropper. Broras take water really well. Okay. Yeah. And you guys, you guys can try it out and let me know, uh, let, you know, let everyone know what you think. But in my experience, they take water really, really well. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I think, I think, well, my plan is to drink it down about half and then I'll add a couple of drops and see how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. Now I know after, after 1975, there, the Broras definitely changed in style a little bit where, where before that they were a lot more farmy and, 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 and really, really, really funky. And then after that, they kind of went more towards the Port Allen and, um, Colila style a little bit. So, so that, that definitely a, a little different. So if you're not getting heavy farm notes, that's why. But I don't know if you guys are or not. Not on the 35. On the on the uh, 38 for sure, I think. I'm getting a, like a little bit of funk notes on the 35. I wouldn't describe it as farm, but I'm getting like like really like sweet sugary notes on it as well. 
Yeah. There is like somewhere in the background, there is exactly what Narby is describing. It's just very hidden with, right. with all that fresh fruit, like up front. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I got you. I got you. But very unique, very unique whiskey. Sounds awesome. If you guys, uh, why don't you guys let me know which, which uh, whiskey I should drink next? Oh, man, no, I want to. Did you already do the uh, Springbank Twenty One? Uh, which which Twenty One? The this one or the one that you had? So on your left, actually, I would be very interested for you to try that Highland Park far left. This one. Yeah. Okay, you got it. So the one that me a bit in the bottle. The parafilm on it, so I'm gonna take the parafilm off and then uh, I'm gonna pour myself a drink. Obviously, I had to choose the most difficult one to open. <laughs> no, 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 a lot of them have it. I always parafilm my uh, older bottles. So that's just to prevent extra oxidization. If the cork's not exactly tight, you're going to make a seal, uh, a better seal on the, on the whiskey. Exactly. Exactly. So I literally do it after each dram I pour. Kind of a pain in the ass, but right. I'm paranoid with my bottles. No, I hear you. When you got an investment like that, you gotta you got to keep care of it for sure. Um, yeah. Just real quick in the chat, uh, I saw Train C came in. What's going on? Private, private. I don't think I've seen before. Welcome to the show. Um, we have someone else in here. Um, You've been at 49 steady for like almost oh, 49 time. people. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Right on. I was trying to get into the chat, but I'm like, this. Grant's <laughs> saying that he's very thirsty right now. There's this thing about like watching. People drink whiskey that makes you want to drink whiskey. It happens all the time. That's why I, I try not to watch reviews at work. <laughs> you go to the app, YouTube. I am stunned how different they are. Between the, you tried the 30 I haven't, I haven't tasted it, just, just nose and all. Yeah, the nose, the nose like, is it's so different. It's interesting, yeah, the, the differences. Because, I mean, as far as distillate, it's only a year apart. Um, year extra three years, but yeah, well, the exact same ABV. Maybe what Narby was saying, right? The changes from year to year, right? And I should mention, um, on the 38, anyway, I wrote it down. Um, refill American and European oak on the 38 year old. Okay. Um, I think most of the brewers are all refill casts. Narby, do you know about that? Uh, brewers being refill casts, uh, for the majority of it. Yeah, you'll get American and your uh, European oak casks. Right. And most of the time it is refill. I feel like the 35 has like more tired casks used. Like it has more of a vibrancy from that distillery. Whereas. I think you have to be really experienced to, you know, that the 38 is Aurora. Right. Whereas the 35, I think you like if you've had some Klein Leash, you've had maybe one or two Brora in your day, you could pick that up. Mistaking it as Klein Leash, perhaps. Or that, yeah. 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 Right, you're gonna, you're gonna trip out at how much sweeter and fruiter it even gets with air. Um, very, very, you know, it tripped us out the first time we had a Brora. I just we we were almost a little confused, and then once we spent time with the whole bottle, we started fully understanding it. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, you're just going to take time with these for sure as they go down. Oh, for sure. In the time it's been open, it's changed a lot. Yeah. Um, Jason Fisk is asking, has Narby yeah. had the 34 Brora? I have not had a 34-year-old. I have had several of the 30s and the 35 and 38. Never had a 34-year-old. Now the 34, that was the one I reached out to you when uh, looking for these bras because there was two available, exact same price, the 38 and the 34. And you said definitely go to the 38 because the 38 was a 70s distillate, whereas the 34 is like an 80 something, right? Yeah, and you're getting a 77 distillate, which is definitely, it's known as kind of second place to that 72. So, so it was a big, big difference that you were mentioning that they were both the same price. Yeah, yeah, both the same price uh, in Quebec for the 34 or the 38. Two drops of water, like literally drops. And 
what a difference. Okay. Just on the note. Yeah. It takes water really well, guys. Experiment with water. It's starting to smell more like that 38 now. Right? Right food. Yeah. Narby, you guys got to get a, a dropper. You keep pouring into a cap. I, I cringe every time I see that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you talking about the cap? Yeah, the cap. <laughs> You know, you know what's funny is we it's just the way we've always done it. And, uh, I see other people doing it too, and I, sometimes I wonder, and I'm like, did I start something here? Because I, don't I know think you did. Thinking, you know? I think you did start that. <laughs> you know, we used fun. to do that as well. Um, South Florida Pete Lovers. Pete Lovers did that. Fill a cap and then pour it in. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot safer than trying to pour from the bottle, but <laughs> <laughs> the raw. Yeah, the raw. <laughs> So, so Rob, you wanted uh, you wanted me to pour this. Look at I'm, not, I'm not going to spend time reviewing it, but what's so crazy is you, you know you think of Highland Park and the traditional notes, but this one is like Dunnage Warehouse mushrooms and truffles and coffee and rich cherry. It's just like you would never ever know it's a Highland Park. It's so so so. Crazy. Now, do you pick up like any Highland Park? profile on that at all or is it just completely different from any Highland Park you've ever had? Uh, a touch of that Heather smoke, but that might only be because I know it's Highland Park. If you gave it to me blind, I honestly probably wouldn't. Yeah. Right. It's amazing how many times that would probably happen. Like if you didn't know you were drinking a certain distiller, you wouldn't get that distillery characteristic, right? Like and then it's amazing also on the flip side to that where you're tasting something blind, you're like, holy oh, shit, this is definitely that type of whiskey or whatever, right? Right. But yeah, yeah that it, water. <clears throat> really nice and best. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to doing blind stuff, I'm either like so amazed at how like amazing I'm doing or so amazed at how terrible I'm doing. It's like either or. <laughs> I would love to see you do uh Aqua Vitae's blind challenge. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen those. Those are cool. Those are cool. Those are tough. Those are really, really tough. Yeah, well, <laughs> Rob, Rob got, Rob got, uh, Rob got a tough one for sure. Those whiskeys were just really, really obscure. You know, Rob does a very good job. I've seen him do it at, at other times too. He actually does a very, very good job. He did a uh, great job on that one. Yeah, he's got a good palate. Yeah, and you were like, you were not even like a hundred percent too. You were a little under the weather for that review, I mm -hmm. think, right? My son had a hand, foot, and mouth disease. Right, yeah. He's, he's and living I had, in the house I had with tankers. He's living <laughs> in the house with hand, foot, and mouth, and he's like killing the freaking Aqua Vitae challenge. <laughs> <laughs> my mouth was like littered with tankers. <laughs> <laughs> I think at one point my wife comes down and Roy, all, like, so the, the way it works is you, you film and you send all the footage to Roy. And I'm like, I'm not really tasting any of these whiskeys. <laughs> like, I don't know if I'm tasting any of these correct because. Like, a, like, it burns my mouth every time I put a whiskey in my mouth. And my wife's just, like, soldier through it, whatever. Like, <laughs> she's just, like, suck it up, basically. And I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> Bad day to choose. To I just felt, un like, pressured because it was sitting on my desk for so long. I was like, I got to do this. Um, Steven's asking, just coming in, what year release was the 37? So it's the 38. Uh, the 38 was the 15th release, 2016. The 35 was the 13th release, 2014. Jasper, what do you remember? 2014. 2014. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. With water, though, that 35 just goes next level. I love, like, the, yeah, I'm just getting that, like, candy, sugary sweetness to it, too. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah. And I love that saltiness, too. Like, I'm picking up in the in the 38. I'm getting those farm notes. There's yeah. people that refuse to add water to their whiskey, and like they don't realize what a mistake they're making. Like that Linkwood we have, that Gordon McPhail Linkwood 1984. If you don't add water to that, you'll never understand how good that whiskey can actually be. Like that whiskey is bonkers. Yeah, but it needs water. Like it needs it. Yeah. I I have a question for you guys. Um, I'm obviously seeing everything on delay. Any advice on how I don't see everything on delay? Uh, no, you can't. It's all delayed. If you flip your phone over, um, and you know what? At this, uh, really, 
I don't know if there would be that much of a quality drop off if you flipped your phone over and just like watched us through the screen. To be honest with you, the problem is he's so far away though. If you flip, I mean, you might not see it that well from where you are anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All, all good. All good. I think it's all it's all working out fine. I was just wondering since the first time doing it, R rookie question. Yeah, I was gonna say this is your first ever live, right? You've never gone live before on your channel or been a guest on someone else's channel. So if you know, I think Rob and I have talked about going live for like over a year, like a hundred yeah. times. And it just never happened. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you gave me a play heads up notice. So I was like, all right, I'm not making any plans Friday. I'm going to hang out with you guys. And uh, uh, I'm excited to chill with you guys. Well, I feel very, very honored to uh, for you to take your time to do it because that's it's awesome having you on for sure. And uh, the plenty of heads up notice goes like with the show. So, like, when I got here, I made a joke because Jeremy like fills out an like, entire sheet. You can't really pick it up, but that's all typed out, <laughs> well prepared. Um, so that's Sipper Social Club preparation for a live. Right. So yeah. Whiskey in the Six is you push play and you say, hey, guys, this is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. <laughs> all, all good. I can relate. Uh, this is called a rundown. In the television world, we write these things out so you can see kind of how it works uh, with everything. And speaking about the rundown, let's um, – these people have been watching about an hour. Let's, uh, let's give away some whiskey. What do you think about I think that? that's a great idea. All right. We're going to start with um, the bottles. So, like I said before, full bottle giveaway, winner's choice. You can choose between Lot 40 Cast Strength 11 year old. Everyone knows the Weller 107. And this one I named um, Most Surprised, Most Pleasantly Surprised Whiskey on my 2018 Whiskey of the Year uh, video. Craziest sherry bomb you'll ever experience. I call it a sherry bomb. <laughs> I'm like, this is the greatest sherry bomb. There's no sherry, this is not a sherry whiskey whatsoever. <laughs> what I meant was that it's very like strong as far as like you pick up a sherry bomb. Wine influenced. Very, very strong <laughs> wine influence. Uh, really good whiskey. Before we go into it, what, I wanna know which, guy, which bottle you guys would pick out the three. Okay, yeah, so. What would you guys choose here? You go first. Me? Yeah, why not? You can go there. Uh, the Deanston. The Deanston? Yeah. The Deanston. Um, man, this, despite my desire to be original here, I'd definitely go with the Deanston as well. Yeah, I think um, for me, it'd be the Deanston. Um, but. For someone maybe in the United States who hears a lot about Lot 40 Cast Strength, yeah. can't get a bottle, maybe they go for that one. Absolutely. Um, yeah, but Deanston for me. I, you know what? I have both. <laughs> 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 to, to, to not be uh, too original here as well, I would go with the Deanston. That being said, I do have the Weller open, both bottles open, and I always, that's like my daily drinker. Right here. Yeah, just, that's a great daily sipper. Yeah. Um, as far as the Weller line's concerned, this or the 12, what do you what do you say? I would say this. This, yeah. Yeah. Rob? Uh, like daily or just? No, what's your favorite, the 107 or the 12-year-old? You know what, I really think that the 12-year-old, if it was a higher ABV, I just, I prefer that by a long shot. Mm -hmm. I like the ABV of the 107, but I feel like it's a bit drying. So yeah. the, the, like that's, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I would go the, oh sorry, uh, Jasper, what would you pick? I have to agree with Rob. I mean, the, the, the 12 is a little light in ABV, right? I, the, this one's a little hot. I mean, it's just I, I, like something in between. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. So the poor man's happy. It's yeah, cool. there you go. Exactly. I, I think right. that's why that, that was created, right? Because mm -hmm. you get the, the refineness of that 12 years in a cask and then the extra ABV punch, right? That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, for me, I would go the 12-year-old. I do like it more than the 107, but it's very, very close. Um, I did a review. You can check it out. Uh, this plus the Weller 12 plus my poor man's Pappy 60-40 uh, mixture. Which is actually a really good whiskey. It is good. Yeah, because you get a little bit of both um, in there. I have to say, what you said before, if you're American, if you're a viewer that's from there, that lost 40 cast yeah. string, it's that's not good. like any Canadian whiskey you've ever had, right? Mm -hmm. And it's definitely worth it. If there was a Canadian whiskey at the moment, yeah. not including micro distilleries and stuff like that, that I would say, try this and 
this is a good like yeah, idea good. of what we could be or mm -hmm. what we should be. Mm -hmm. That's that whiskey right there. Sure. It doesn't mm -hmm. have any funny stuff in it. It's yeah. you know, they're not trying to play by those rules that Canadian whiskey has. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Virgin oak cask, Canadian oak casks, eleven years old. Can't go wrong. Mm -hmm. Cast drink. Um, before I give this away, I just want to say thanks to everyone who subscribed to the channel. It's been a crazy nine months, um, and you guys make the wheels turn. I uh, love chatting with you guys, so this is for you. Um, I will ship this to anywhere in the world. <laughs> uh, even if you're in the UK, I will try to get it to you. Um, I will send it out of the best I can. Um, if it makes it to you, awesome. If it gets lost... He's going to send me it's there not. and ask me to bring back another more. <laughs> um, shipping to Canada, no problem. Shipping to the United States, no problem. If you're elsewhere, um, I will still try to ship it to you. I will try to get it out. If it uh, if it gets seized or whatever, um, I tried. And uh, that's all again. If, if it gets seized, I'll send you a sample because that will probably get to you <laughs> with maybe not the full bottle. Um, so let's do it. The question is, and it's going to be the first person to respond, um, just so you know, there is some delays in the chat. Um, so the first person respond as it comes in on our screen. Sometimes you'll see yours come first before someone else's, um, but I'll just go by what I see here. So the question is, and again, you get to choose one of these. Um, I'm going to give a little uh, shout out to, um, to Malt Reviews here. I mentioned it earlier in the stream, what was Malt Review's first review ever? What was the bottle they reviewed? Can I answer? <laughs> you guys cannot answer? I think you've asked this before in a previous live. <laughs> Maybe, it's my favorite trivia question. <laughs> oh, there you go, Mark got the Delmore 50. Mark and then Kevin right behind him. Oh, and then PB. Um, so yeah, Mark, Mark Saliba, and he's in Ontario, actually. Mark Saliba, you got it, bud. Um, Kevin, really, really close, like one second after him. Um, so yeah, Mark, congratulations. Uh, let us know what one you're choosing. I also have that too, so I don't know if we should show that the camera. You got it as uh, Mark as well. Yeah, you got it as Mark, Caitlin. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, Kevin, sorry, you were so close. <laughs> the crazy thing is, depending on your internet connection, you can actually be the first one to press enter, and it might not be you. Mm -hmm. Mark just has the best internet. Yeah, so Mark, um, let us know what you're going to choose. Shout out to whoever Mark is, uh, yeah, whoever is providing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hopefully it's... I want to say that just I've been going back and forth on these. And although the nose is so different, this one's so bright and fruity, this one's, I guess, I'm just more rich and has a little bit more spice to it. They open up on the palate the same way with that bright fruitiness and sweetness. And then it totally changes. Yeah. Well, for sure. It's so different. Mm -hmm. I mean, you definitely get a lot more age in the 38, mm. a lot more oak. I mean, definitely. Mm. Let's, was... talk about, let's talk about the oak influence. I wasn't really picking up much on either of these. Yeah. I feel like we got so much more oak influence in the Linkwood that we had that's around the same age, the Mortlock that we had that's oh, close to had some oak, definitely. Right? Um, I feel like there's some tired casks used in, and I think that's what people love about Brara, that the distillery characteristic can last for over 30 years because they don't use uh, casks that are fresh. Right. You know? Well, yeah, you, and yeah, so go ahead, Nari. I was going to say, sorry to interrupt you, Rob. I was going to say that one of the reasons why Brora became kind of famous a little later, and it's almost like it was a closed distillery like before it became famous, is because the spirit has to age so long. So right around, uh, along the lines of what you were saying, Rob, it doesn't show up, it doesn't do what it's going to do until it's been aged for at least 25 years. So it's one of those spirits that really, really needs to be aged where you could take like a metallic, put it in a cherry cask for even 10 years and it could be epic. That's not something that I pointed out too in my other reviews about how refill casks, you know, sometimes 
can be better than first fill just in the respect that you know distillery managers master distillers they know what that casking is capable of right they know what that first how that first distillate came out of it set it aside and yeah um brora what is the youngest brora bottled recent bottling i guess i should say because i'm sure they had younger stuff when they were operational but i think i saw a 30 year old somewhere and i think i also saw 28 i want to say or like as far as narby do you know this official bottlings of brora from diageo what's the youngest they bottle them at official is uh, the youngest they've done is a 25 year old okay but you are going to find brewer as like 19 years old from like independent bottlers. Okay. Right. Yeah. I honestly, okay. So, so far my assessment, I'm only a couple sips into the 38, but the 38 is everything I was hoping it would be. Uh, it's like just like bonkers on the nose, on the palate. It's, it's rich. It's got a great viscosity to it. It's mouth coating and it's super sweet. It's, I don't know. It, you can really taste the age. Whereas I felt the 35 until we added those drops of water, I couldn't really get that age. Mm -hmm. um, that's not a knock on the 35. And I do, I guarantee, like Narvi was saying earlier, that these are going to get way better. Right. Both of them. But, yeah. and even now they're just, they're opening up more. Yes. I mean, these have been open for almost two hours. We'll have to do this again. In a Almost two hours, yes, yes, yes. and there's still it's still it's still opening up. Right now, thirty eight heads and tails open the thirty five for me. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm with you there. Nose, palate, everything. Yeah, I mean the thirty five. Unfortunately, my bottle. Unfortunately, <laughs> it it tastes like just an older Klein Leach. Mm -hmm. right? the, the the newer generation Klein Leach maybe a touch older. I mean, just, you got a lot of Klein Leach there. The thirty eight just feels like it's a different ballpark right now. Yeah, yeah. right. I'm with you there. Uh, not like to disrespect that 35 at all because I think it's delicious, but this 38 is like just so complex. Like there's like so much going on. Um, so we convinced Mark he is taking the Deanston. Uh, Mark, let me know if you had it before. I'm interested to see if you had this one. Um, they were available in the LCBO up to not even that long ago. Yeah. So fine. And good value too for these. Uh, we got more of these than probably anywhere else in the world. Yeah, the LCBO got a, a large allotment, and it's rare that they would get something sought after in large quantities. Well, you see all these guys on different like forums and stuff like that selling this for decent money, mm -hmm. like upwards of like almost close to three hundred bucks, right? Crazy. Because it's not available anywhere else. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So good choice, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> and that one needs a lot of time and air. Oh, absolutely. That one's. That one's a fighter. Like it, you, yeah. you take a sip of that, and you're gonna take a little bit of a beating if you don't add some water. Um, just interesting in the chat. If uh, if you were close and didn't quite make it, what would you have chosen? I'm just interested to see. Um, maybe our American friends would have maybe gone for the lot forty because it's something they can't get there. Um, it's just interesting to see what you would pick. I know this in certain parts of the U.S. It's super hard to find. It goes for really hard American to find. almost everywhere in the US. Yeah, and the secondary market on that year, look at that. Like 80 bucks is probably the low end. Um, yeah. I've seen them up, up as almost a $90, maybe approaching 100 bucks US for that. So it's yeah. like uh, Kevin would have picked a lot 40, Michael would have picked a lot 40, Chris with a lot 40. So yeah, I guess I'm assuming that you're probably south of the border. Yeah. Yeah. So the lot 40 is good. It's a good. No, the lot product. 40, any of these bottles would have been great. Yeah. They appeal to different people yes. based mm -hmm. on which region they're from, pretty mm -hmm. much. Yeah. Like Mark probably has one or two of the 11s stocked up because he's from Ontario, right? Mm -hmm. And then recently, the 107 was released in Ontario as well, and there was a lot of them. So people mm -hmm. had a chance to get their hands on some. Yeah, like on the shelf, walk into the store, grab one, no problem. For sure. Which uh, a lot of people can't say in the States. Right? Not at an amazing price. Right? right? 35 bucks mm -hmm. Canadian. Yeah, 35 Canadian dollars, which is about 28, 27 US dollars. Mm -hmm. Really good price. And the rumor was that it was supposed to go up to 50 for that yeah. release. It was incredible. Right? Yeah. 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 Price oh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, Michael's asking the lot 4012 better than the 11. In my opinion, yes. Um, I did a review of them head to head, and I did think that the 12 was better. You made me do the same. 
because you were convinced that you were right. And <laughs> I, I actually agreed with you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I didn't think so when I tried it afterwards. I right? like, it's so hard to say what you like. And that's why that question came up yesterday on my channel. Jeremy was over my house yesterday. So this kind of feels like a little bit of deja vu. Um, but the, the question came up yesterday. We were talking about search and how many reviews is that he's had. Yeah. And his first review compared to his most recent review and how different his opinion would be if he went back and reviewed that, like whatever thousand reviews ago mm. bottle. Yeah. Um, and even Narby, I'm curious what you would say about that. You kind of touched on it earlier about your Dalmore 50. Um, the marks we gave early on in our show have drastic, like they would drastically change now. And it's too bad that you can't just like revisit the same whiskeys over and over again and kind of like update the score. Uh, Cause a lot of them, you finish the bottle before you actually get a chance to appreciate it or, or weigh it against things that are like, like similar or, you know, I don't know. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, don't feel bad if your score drastically changes. I'm telling you, I don't care how experienced you are or how inexperienced you are. As you keep trying more and more stuff, whether you're a surge or you're us or someone who hasn't tried nearly as much, scores definitely change. I, uh, I remember actually Mike and I bought a bottle of Glen Glass out 1972. And we, we, we pretty much bought it because Surge gave it a 95. And then when we tried it, we were so shocked he gave it a 95. And then he reviewed it again and he gave it a 91. We're like, you asshole, why couldn't you have it? <laughs> started with a 91 first. We spent $1,000 on this bottle. But, uh, but yeah, scores definitely, definitely change. And I, I just, that's why when I listen to someone, it's not about who's the best reviewer to me. It's about how much whiskey have you tried. Because if you've tried it all, then at the very least, I could respect your opinion, yeah. and when you get a score, I kind of know that your score is coming from somewhere. But if you haven't tried it all, then it's kind of like I don't see the point of scoring. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, you also have to know the reviewers' like personal bias as well, right? That's right. You guys like absolutely like, charity, absolutely. Like, like the distillate driven one stuff. Yeah, right? yeah, and I think that's when you are taking recommendation of a reviewer. You know, what's their palate like? Is it similar to yours? Can you, you know? trust them to make a purchase based on what they've scored whiskey and uh, based on what you would score yourself. Having said that, I'll have no idea about Narby because I've never tried a single one of his. <laughs> <laughs> Just trust Narby blind. Whatever he says goes for sure. <laughs> Wait, say that again? I said trust Narby completely blind. Whatever you say is is gospel. No, 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 no. That's not true. But like, for, for example, it, it's, it's all about knowing your reviewer. For example, like Serge, he loves complexity that's why he loves these broras so much right where maybe we love a sherry bomb and he might give the a most epic sherry bomb in 92 where we might think it's a 95 and he might give something that's super super complex but it's maybe not your favorite but he's actually scoring it on the complexity more more than anything so it, you really got to know your reviewer yeah I remember I scored the most recent Springbank uh, local barley nine-year-old in 86 and took some serious, serious heat because Surge scored at a 91. So how can I possibly go lower than Surge? But uh, yeah, I took some heat for that one. But again, that's like more of a spirit-driven whiskey, I think, and that's kind of in his wheelhouse. Absolutely. He loved, he, he loves the, when he could, you know, kind of almost taste uh, the original distillate and you kind of pick out those flavors, and he really, really likes those, that style. So for me, I'm definitely not scored 91 either. Well, like, here's a good example. And, and then it kind of, I kind of feel bad about scoring whiskey because then we have all these guys that watch us that kind of do, that maybe not take our word as gospel, but they, they're going to go out and invest a good portion of their hard-earned cash into something that we give a high mark to. And then they don't like it as much as we did, or it doesn't, you know, maybe they don't like it at all, or maybe they just kind of like it or whatever. We're affecting lives by giving us. <laughs> we are, right? Like, we are. And then like, I want to know how bad the guy from the distiller app feels about giving Highland Park 18 a 99 out of a hundred. Yeah, like, that's crazy. That blows my mind because I mean, even when I tried it for the first time, I was like, okay, this is okay. 
but to get something at 99 that like that means you tried literally everything and this is the best whiskey you've ever had in your life yeah i don't know i mean that's, I feel why, like- that's why you gotta that's why you gotta go with you gotta know who you're listening to those guys are obviously getting paid to say stupid shit like giving island park 18 at 99 but uh yeah. but yeah i hear you but i think once we've had some experience like we have we, we know how to you know just ignore those things <laughs> Well, what Highland Park twenty five, the old one got a hundred out of a hundred at San Francisco Spirits Award, right? But I mean, there's almost like a a way you can justify that because it was a higher ABV, it was a lot more sherry driven than the new, more recent like releases and that sort of thing. Like you can almost justify that. But a Highland Park eighteen at forty three percent is getting a ninety nine out of a hundred. Right. Yeah. It's stupid. It's stupid. It's 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 almost irresponsible to score any whiskey that high, because I mean that's more of like a like a deathbed review, right? Because right. like I'm not gonna try anything else. This was literally the best we have ever had. So there's my score. Send me cases upon cases. <laughs> and I'll never drink another whiskey that's again. Right. Yeah. Like that's what my 99 score is gonna be. Like if I can hoard, if I can fill my entire house with it, I will. Yeah. You know. But sure. it's not. I don't know. Uh, Mark is saying yeah. that um, <laughs> Super Social Club and Whiskey in the Six yeah. have really lightened his wallet over the years. Yeah, well, other reviewers do that for us too. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, he's not alone. Yeah, yeah. Jasper complains about that all the time, but oh, yeah. then, but recently, that we like since we've been hanging out, my wallet's a lot lighter <laughs> because <laughs> Jasper's <laughs> around. <laughs> Like, let's just let Jasper get that, and then we can just bum a dram off of him. Yeah, we're going to start doing that. You know. <laughs> Fun. It's funny because, you know, I remember Mike and I, when, when uh, a new bottle would come to auction that we really, really wanted, we're like, all right, let's see which bank will approve the highest limit for a credit card, so zero interest credit card, so we can try to buy those bottles. We were literally opening up new credit cards every month. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I don't recommend that. Uh, <laughs> That responsibility uh doing that yeah, that's I, I, I absolutely don't recommend it I don't, I don't regret it but a lot of people will comment on my channel and be like are you guys billionaires i mean i just want to be like i i wish you could see my bank account <laughs> <laughs> hey man you know drink well live uh live in shambles that's what i say yeah yeah but I, I, I don't regret it i've plenty of closed bottles where i've actually if i wanted to sell it i'd come up like tenfold yeah. <laughs> well, we'll die heroes. Because <laughs> we'll die nice and young. <laughs> like yeah. uh, Eric, what uh, are you guys just, 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 just drinking the Flores today, or are you guys going to uh, try some other stuff too? Well, there's a whole bunch of stuff I'm eyeing in Jeremy's shelf over here that, <laughs> that I think we're going to have to revisit. Rob and I are going to do a little bit of a blind challenge soon, actually. Sure. Uh, so okay, cool. we're gonna we're gonna do that. Yeah, the little dartboard here. Um, I can put my brawlers aside. And uh, do you want to do that now? Whatever you want, but I, I and he doesn't want to give it up. His I don't want to give up this thirty-eight year old. <laughs> this thirty-eight year old is absolutely bonkers. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm, I, I'm I'm very happy you guys like it a lot. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? And it, actually, there's a reviewer that has experienced an incredible amount of whiskey, and I have the utmost respect for that for him and um we tend to have like almost opposite opinions on whiskey and this is an example where he was telling me that the 35 is leaps and bounds better than the 38 and i can totally understand now that i know the way he, he <laughs> <laughs> now that i know the way he prefers whiskey why he would love the 35 but the 38 is so much more in my it's okay because each is own right yeah no exactly that's what that's why there's so many different types did you guys did you uh did you guys try the 25 yet or just the 21 of this new one i haven't even opened mine yet uh i'm curious to think and see what you think of that 21 i actually wouldn't mind if you plan on opening it soon i wouldn't mind knowing what you think about that i'm gonna, I'm gonna pop it open right now and i'm gonna have it in this uh 1920s Blender's glass from the Whiskey Exchange. This is an amazing glass if anyone's looking for a unique glass. I mean, it's a monster, monster nose. 
That's uh, yeah, I've seen that glass before. I think actually Ralphie pulled that out. Um, it just looked, yeah, yeah. I just I hate this, I hate the look of it, but I'm sure it knows as well. It, it does look a little funky, it's almost like a wine glass, but but it gives a killer note. Um, so yeah, we actually I tried for the very first time that new Highland Park 25 and 21 last night. Um, the 21 really nice and sweet, it's a port, port rum, right? Mm -hmm. Finished. It's uh, 60% port, I believe, and 40% rum. The 21 is going to be a huge fan favorite this year. And it's because it's like, like you're, you're sipping it and you don't really, like, it's like going back to Kool-Aid. Like you're like, just, you just keep on, like, I want a glass like this of it. <laughs> I just wanna, like sip it. It's because you've been drinking cast drink too long. That's I like, think that's, <laughs> it, that's part of it for sure. But it's just way too easy to drink. I feel like my daughter would be okay like, just <laughs> sipping <laughs> it. Like it's beautiful. Anything 46 is like yeah. super drinkable now. It's water. <laughs> no, but I'm like. I'm trying it right now. So I just opened it and poured it. So I'm, uh, I'm curious to see how it is. It's, it's super sweet. So if you're not like. It's a, a big, it's a dessert whiskey for sure. Oh, more, wow. Way more so than the 25. Right? Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're right. This is almost like grape juice kind of sweet. Very, very sweet on the nose. Mm -hmm. You definitely get a lot of the grape in that. The, the port really Absolutely. Comes through. I don't get as much rum as I was expecting. I get it's like all port, mm -hmm. but it's like the nicest kind of port. Like it's just like honestly grape juice. Yeah. Like, you probably get the rum on the palate because of the sweetness. Maybe, yeah, that's probably what the sweetness is. So, so I haven't tried it yet. I just on first nosing, and this one is all port. Then you would think this one would be sweeter, but this one actually feels like it's first fill Oloroso, where this one you can tell uh, is a port. But it's, it's shocking that this one tastes like a first fill Oloroso, but it's all port. Yeah, Jasper makes a great point. He was saying that. The rum cask on the palate is where you're getting that sweetness from. And I think he's right. I think on the nose, you're getting that beautiful port. And then you go to the palate and it's super sweet because of the rum cask. And it's such a cool marriage. I've never experienced anything like it. Yeah, but you can, you can, and, and, and it helps knowing that it's, it's rum cask, but you could get some of those funky rum elements mm -hmm. on the nose a little bit too. It'd be interesting to see where they source their rum from. It seems like rum finishing is kind of like a trend now. I mean, obviously, I guess it was a trend back when they were. Well, it's finishing. 21, yeah. So it's got to be. <laughs> I'm saying, like, they, they bought those casts 21 years That's ago. That's what I'm saying. So, like, it seems like now you're seeing all these rum uh, finished whiskeys predated back then. I just think it's probably an issue of sourcing, right? Like, rum yeah. casts. Easier to source, cheaper perhaps than cherry, whatever. That's, that's all. That's all it is. It's like they're going after these wine casks and they're going after rum casks. They're going after Armagnac, Cognac casks because it's so much harder to get those quality European uh, sherry sherry casks. So they kind of started looking elsewhere. I'm personally not nearly as much fan as some other people with all these wine finished and all these rum finished but sometimes it works but most of the time it doesn't work for me yeah yeah i yeah. haven't i haven't had a cognac cask other than glenn livet 15 yet and i i've heard good things about good cognac casks. like i know deanston 18 there's a version in cognac cask that's supposed to be awesome but i've right. never yeah yeah i mean uh I think one point that I think uh, Ralphie made one time is that finished whiskeys, how good is that initial maturation? Is it something that they're like, okay, this isn't good enough. We got to finish it with a cast to release it. And then you kind of run into that situation where it's like, it's trying to mask a poor quality initial maturation of a whiskey. I think, I think well, that happens majority of the time, but I think there's also the guys that are like, we have all this ex bourbon aged whiskey. Let's try something different. Let's like we we like our whiskey just fine, but let's try something that's a little bit off the cuff or whatever. And like the great example of that is the Longro Seventeen Chardonnay cask that we have. Mm. Aged seven years in Chardonnay, or sorry, in uh, ex bourbon casks. Moved to a Chardonnay cask for ten years. Yep. It's I love it. It's bonkers. I think it's amazing. There it is. Right this there. is it right here. And the white, for whatever reason, doesn't 
pick up very well here. But well, I, I mean, think about it, guys. Like I understand, and it definitely works sometimes. I hear you out, but like imagine having a cast and you sample it, and you're like, "This is amazing." You would not mess with it, right? Because you just like let me just keep aging this or bottle it. You would be very, very difficult to take take something epic and then throw it into a wine cast, not knowing what's going to happen to it. But but I hear what you're saying. It definitely works sometimes, and when it works, it works well. Yeah, that's a great point. That's yeah. a great point, right? Like, if Absolutely. you have a perfect ex bourbon cast, there's no way you're going to finish it with anything else. No. Yeah. No, that's no definitely true. Yeah. It's because well, it's a more, more of a probability thing, right? If you distill so much and you have all this stuff in your warehouse, someone's tasting it and trying it out over time. They probably have, you know, a section of stuff that, yeah, not so great. Send it off to blending, or maybe I can sure. do something funky with it and charge people insane amounts because it's 20 something years old, right? right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, that's why um, you know people review whiskey and you get an opinion before you buy it most of the time. Hopefully, anyway, right? Yeah. Um, what do you think about that, Narby? You liking it or what? I I am, I am liking it, but I'm not like absolutely in love with it, and it's and it's hard because I'm. I can't help myself but to want to compare it to this one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's hard to compare uh, like a, a regular cast. release. Yeah when you've got just epic, epic stuff on the table. <laughs> yeah, no, and I mean, it sucks because I just saw this one at the last auction went for 500 pounds. They were still going for like 250 pounds and I wish I bought like 10 of them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. You know, <laughs> I need a whiskey sniper. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Um, all right, Rob and I are going to do our semi-blind dartboard challenge. So if you've watched the show before, um, what I've done is I've gone in and I took 20 bottles, 20 samples from my collection. Um, I'll share the list of what we have here. So this is what we got. These are all um, poured into samples. My lovely girlfriend, assistant, Caitlin, has randomly assigned a number to all of them that corresponds with the dartboard. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to throw a dart. It's going to hit a number. She's going to pour us a sample of one of these whiskeys. We're going to try to nail it completely blind. I guess semi-blind because we know what one it will be. We've already done the Belvini Ton 1401 and the Deanston 20... What was it? That's it. Sherry. The Deanston, right? Deanston 20 Sherry Cast. Right. So those two are out. So if we hit those numbers, we'll have to shoot again. Um, so those ones have already been done. What we're going to do is I'm going to pick someone in the chat. They're going to answer a trivia question. Um, whoever gets it, I'm going to give them a sample of any whiskey from that list, plus a Highland Park logo Glen Karen right here. So you're going to automatically win that. If we incorrectly guess, I'm going to give you another sample. If we both incorrectly guess, I'm going to give you another sample, plus I'm going to give you another glass. So these whiskeys, we, I know them. They're my collection. You've had every single one, I think, I think for so. the most part. Yeah. Here they are again, so you can just check it out. So we've had some Glen Cairns. They're completely blacked out, so we won't be able to see the color. Yeah. So let's do this up real quick. If he wants to throw the dart. <laughs> Watch me get to Highland Park 18 and be like, this is the best <laughs> whiskey I've ever had in my life. 99. <laughs> I don't know what this is, but it's 99 out of 100. This is easily a 99 out of 100. <laughs> Pardon me? You want to throw? I don't know. I, I let's get Jasper to throw. Yeah, I think Jasper should throw. Let's get Jasper to throw. He uh, watch. I'm gonna miss now. Right? He brought the. If you yeah, we know what the first time I missed and the first time Rod missed too. Nice. Oh, what do we get? Yeah. Uh, what is call that? Eighteen. Eighteen. Four or eighteen. Four or eighteen. What do you call it? Eighteen. Inside the like kitchen juice. We'll go with eight. We'll go with eighteen. I think it's more. Eighteen than. Uh, I don't it's know. more four. I think. More four. Okay, we'll go with number four. Okay, you want four? Or you want eight? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a little bit more on four, so let's go with four. Okay. 
All right, so Caitlin's going to pour the sample. Um, she's going to write down what it actually is, and she'll show the camera so you guys will know. Don't turn it. What we're trying. I can turn this on because I actually bought a different connector. See? I don't trust you. Just leave it. <laughs> Why don't we walk away? We should walk away. Well, what we can do is uh, she can hold it up in front of the camera, and uh, Devin can let her know when it's focused. So you guys are know you guys will know what we're drinking. We won't know. Um, and I'll turn the chat away too, so I'm not tempted to do that. I'm just so let's cover up. Let's pick someone in the uh, in the chat to win. So here's a trivia question. So what you're playing for? A sample from one of those twenty whiskeys plus a Glencairn glass. If one of us gets it wrong, I'm going to give you another sample. If we both get it wrong, you're getting another sample and another gun current. So here we go. The question is, um, uh, I had another one for this, didn't I? Okay. So you did. <clears throat> you did that one. I'll do this one. Okay. Um, on my channel, tell me the whiskey. I gave the highest score ever to before value points. It was a review, my highest score ever. Let me know what whiskey that was. Can I play? You cannot play. <laughs> <laughs> First one in the chat to get it right will win. Kevin, you got it. More luck, 31. I gave it 94 out of 100, the highest score I've ever given. Um, I had a subtractive value point just because it was very expensive. And my justification was if you gave it to me blind, I wouldn't say that it's worth that much money. So 90, uh, 94 out of 100 brought down to 93 after the value. So, Kevin, you are the winner. Um, so, you get to pick a sample from one of those 20, plus you get the Glenclaren and you're trying to play for double here. All right, so thank you very much. Uh, these are the Glen Cairns. I blacked them out with just electrical tape, so we won't be able to see the color of the whiskey, so that won't give it away. I'm just gonna turn this, this towards is, Devin. So this is uh, reused electrical see. tape from his 2017 or 18 costume <laughs> <laughs> for Halloween. <laughs> Which year were you, uh, Marilyn Manson? Manson? I was yeah, Manson uh, right. two years ago. Yep, that's in focus. But it's also reversed. So. Oh, is it? Yeah. Maybe it's not. Okay, okay. I don't know. No, I got it. It looks good. It looks good there. It's okay, good. so the viewers at home know what it is. Yep. Don't All turn right. it back yet because. No, no, we won't. We won't look at it because yeah. I don't want it. Someone might say it in the chat or whatever. We'll just. We'll just let it go. Okay. It's gone. It's gone. 99 points right here. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the Highland Park 18, I'll tell you that. <laughs> this is not going to be easy. This is a tough one. This is not going to be, damn it, this is not an easy one. Can I see the list again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you gotta do it blind. No. Can I see? Yeah, you yeah, can see the list. There's only like, a couple of things this can be. This is Balvini Double Wood, twelve. <laughs> yeah, is that your, is that your guess? Is that your final answer? No. <laughs> <laughs> could be a, could be a Macallan. If this is Balvini Double Wood twelve, 12. I've had way too much Barora because I do not taste that. <laughs> no, it could be it could be the, the Macallan twelve double cask. Allen versus Balvini. But it's one of those two for sure. If it's. Man, I am not getting any of that. What are you getting? Why don't you talk all out and sound stupid a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> I'll call this the preliminary for your real blind challenge. Man, this is. Yeah, I don't know. I'm honestly like, I have, I'm clueless. Too much more? Yeah. I have a better excuse than you do because I, <laughs> I was drinking cast strength rye before this. Okay, here we go. Here's the excuses. <laughs> well, whatever. We'll just give uh, Kevin more and more prizes. <laughs> Man, it could be. Could be the one I was ripping for. So. Oh, oh, oh. You need a final answer. Well, 
the common theme through all these are all sherry whiskeys or have some kind of sherry influence to them. Oh, always go with your gut. Mm. Okay, no, that's not the Balvini double wood. That was my mistake. I'm actually thinking it's the one that I was ripping and joking that it, I was going to pick it as the best whiskey of all time. Really? Yeah. Pete, no Pete. There's not no. really. Are you getting Pete? Mm -mm. Yeah. No. What whiskey has Pete here? But it, okay, so let's break it down. It's not heavily sherried. Definitely not heavily sherried. It's. Not a high ABV, so it's 43% or lower. So you're looking at one, two, but I don't think it's that. Three, four. You could be playing it. You could be trying to. <laughs> I'm not that good. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it's the Highland Park 18. There's Whoa. no way it's that. If that's Highland Park 18, I'm going to fucking throw this glass across the room. <laughs> <laughs> you, got up the edge. <laughs> you guys heard that, right? <laughs> What do you think it is? I okay. I didn't pick up any Belvini. I didn't pick up any Highland Park. I think it's <laughs> they should put awesome. It could be the Mac Twelve <sighs> double 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 cast. It's not the Mac Sherry. It could be. The Mac <sighs> I think it's something. Honestly, my first inclination was the Glenbergie Eighteen Austin Morris. So that's the that's the ace in the hole here. Because that's the one you've I don't, tried. I've it. tried it, but I've tried, I've tried very little of it after like. 50 drams in uh i think a pappy van winkle night that we went absolutely right. bonkers on yeah yeah like because i get like a little bit of funkiness and i think that's from is, that. what's the abv on that though isn't it high it's 48 i think oh it's 48. i'm not 100 percent sure okay but i want to say 48 kev jasper and i are the only ones who can see the comments right now so yeah <laughs> we, we are, are, we are trying to keep it together <laughs> I don't know, man. I, this is a tough one. Oh, you know what also it could be? What's that? Tobomori 21. No, it's not that. No? No, nah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> could be anything now. Honestly, I found that Tobomori 21 super sulfur, so I'm not getting any of that. Okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna, I've made my decision. Um, right. I'm locked in for what I'm going to choose. You contemplate more. <laughs> Now you fucking swayed me with this Glenn Burgie. Yeah. <laughs> Someone say it's the electrical tape. It's throwing you off. I don't know, man. I'm blaming it on my blown palette, but I I also think my palette is also blown because I don't I don't know. He just takes the alcohol. I'm not getting any <laughs> any peat. I don't know if that Glenn Burgie had any peat, but that no. Highland Park I haven't had a Highland Park 18 in like five years. Right, yeah. So a Highland Park Pete is very distinctive to me. I think mm -hmm. I would definitely know if I was drinking. Me too, but I don't know. You're probably right. I think you're right. Well, theoretically, the McAllen and the Glendronics Sherry are pretty uh, distinctive. Too. Why, why are you doing this to me? Yeah. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> yeah, no, um, I don't know. Go ahead. I'm locked in. So I'm you, locked in I'm locked sure. in. Yeah, I know what I'm going to say. Uh, so you, you said, you, you said it, or you, you know? I what? haven't said it yet, but I'm gonna. I know what I'm picking. Okay, you go first. Well, I don't want to sway <laughs> your decision. You already did. <laughs> you already swayed my decision. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna say it's the Glenbergie 18, the Austin Morris uh, bottle. I'm gonna say it's a McAllen 12 year old double cask. Okay. Final answer? No. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> can I? Can I reveal it? We've said what we're saying. Yeah, that's it. Reveal. What, what, what was it? Fine. So, Rob, you got it right the first time. It, it was the Balvenie double. Yeah. Wood. No uh, fucking way. Yeah. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. Let me read the comments for you for a second. <laughs> Rob is a machine. Wow. Rob is on. Damn, bro. <laughs> Rob just roundhouse kicked that. <laughs> <laughs> And then after, <laughs> Rob is so off. Rob's a fraud. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Why? That's so awesome. Yeah, that's exactly what I did in the friggin' Aquavita. Because this guy is like, no, this is. 
<laughs> Honestly, I was not picking up any Balvini 12 double wood whatsoever because I get like a chocolate note in that and I did not get it In whatsoever. my head, I was like, what's the most bourbon influenced thing here? Because that's what this is. What's like could be briny, which makes no sense that it's briny, but what, for whatever reason, Balvini is always briny and it doesn't make sense, but it usually is. Um, and then it's a low ABV. So I was like, yeah, it's got to be that. Yeah, I just, I just was not getting that. And even now that I know what it is, I don't, I still don't get it. And then I, I'm gonna be honest. I started like joking about the, <laughs> I forgot, this guy's <laughs> comments were like. <laughs> <laughs> um, you are? I, uh, I don't know. Anyway, either way, I well, cool. So, um, Kevin, congratulations. Uh, since we both got it wrong, um, I'm probably one of the easier ones to guess. I'll give you. A, I'll give you a sample to give to him as well. If that <laughs> makes it a little. And I, I can give him the extra Glen Karen Highland Park glass. You know so what? I've already good. actually given him a couple, so he's <laughs> he has enough good Glen Karen. So I'll still give you two, but. Um, let me just show the list again. Um, I think actually Kevin was a winner on this before. So I think he's <laughs> he's on the ball with these questions. Um, so here's the list again. This is uh, the 20 whiskeys that are up for grabs. So Kevin, pick two. Uh, let me know what you're choosing, and uh, I will send you out these samples, plus the Glen Cairns. Congratulations. And uh, I can't believe that I could not pick out the Pelvini double wood. Probably fraud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I was going to get that. The last time I was here, you guys got the Belvini, right? Yeah. yeah. I, got, I, got the Bel I got the Belvini. When we were here to do yeah, that, we had the, um, the Deanston. We both picked the Deanston correctly. Yeah. 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 We got both of those. Did we, we did two last time. I think we did that because we've only done this one other time, I think. I've done it. Tw I did it once myself. You've done it once with me, and this is our second time together. So this is the third time total of games. Was I live with you though at my house? No, you were here. You were here you know, the, when you did the. Oh tournament. yes, yes, yes. You were. Yeah, you that's were. why I remember. Yeah, you were. Because I remember saying to you, "You're gonna get this one." Yeah, because yeah. that Belvini um, is very uh, distinctive because it's got that uh, that gunpowder note that I that I like in it. Stuck to my gut. <laughs> you should have stuck to your gut, man. You had it. You nailed it off the start. And that was that was, awesome. yeah, that was exactly. a good one. It's just it too. Yeah. yeah. Well, I shut so, you down so quick. I'm like, no, you're way wrong, Rob. Like, that's you're totally. an idiot. That's no way it's that. <laughs> you came in with confidence and you let Jeremy yeah. get in your head. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Another one. Oh, should we do it? Again? Why don't you? Why don't you guys go? I feel like you guys should. Oh uh, yeah, if I can, I can escape really. Like, should we do another? I don't know. It's up to you, man. man I don't, my palate seems like it's zero percent chance of getting anything right. So if you guys want to win, it's cool. You guys want to win some samples? Uh, <laughs> let's give it a second. I want to get into um, whiskey news real quick. There's a couple of things I wanted to share that came out recently, um, as far as whiskey news is concerned. Um, one thing I found on the secondary market, which I think is super, super exciting. Narby, let me know if you've ever seen this bottle before. This was a super old stag bourbon. Um, this was on the secondary market on one of the bourbon groups that I follow. Here's some quick stats about what was said about this bottle. Um, so old stag uh, matured at the George C. Stag Company distillery. Distilled um, in 1911. Bottled in 1935, this is 61% ABV, 24 years old. It's a pint, which is about 475 milliliters. Um, so what was said about this bottle is that it was distilled pre-prohibition, sat in a cask the entire length of prohibition, which was 1920-1933, and then bottled in 1935 at 24 years old. This sold for fifty one hundred U.S. dollars. I thought that was a deal. Yeah, I thought that was an amazing deal. Narby, have you seen anything like that before? Did you see the bottle by any chance? Yeah, I I actually have probably like studied every auction, and I consider myself not a whiskey expert, but almost like a 
knowledgeable when it comes to bottles, but I've never seen that one before. So that was what I would you would consider like a museum piece. I've never seen something like that before. Um, maybe a one of a kind. I mean, how many bottles like that exist from 1935? $5,100 absolutely steal. It went quick. It went real quick. Where, where, where did that sell for $5,100? So this was a bourbon uh, Facebook group that I'm in. Okay, okay. I believe I'm in a few of those too, but I don't participate very often. Yeah, so absolutely insane. Now, mm -hmm. is that a good whiskey? You think that's going to be good? You think it's gonna be over oat at all? Twenty four years old. That's gonna be yeah. like yeah. biting a piece of charred right? oak. <laughs> <laughs> Just chopping down on a bark tree outside your house. Uh, I think it was <laughs> real after that. Like, <laughs> that's another thing. Like it yeah, doesn't. Yeah, it yeah, doesn't really look real. Is it authentic? I'll throw it up again. I'll throw up the image again. Um, there was a bunch of other images, like different angles of the bottle, so forth. And, uh, but I just had this one to share. Um, I mean, it did look like the label was, I mean, the seal is like kind of there, kind of not. Um, <laughs> mm. Is it just like a really awesome fake that they put, you know, a George C. Stagg in? I, I don't know. I don't know. The crazy thing is like, we'll probably never know. Nobody's ever opening that box. You can never open it, right? You can never open it because oh, one. You can open it. <laughs> <laughs> Narby would have it cracked already. Um, I just think that once you crack it, there goes the value. And I mean, what are you going to do? There's a bird else there that has a lot of money that's willing to spend like stupid money for that bottle. You know, you know who's number one in opening bottles? Literally will open it the second it arrives from the mail is Mike. He'll literally open it the second it, it shows up. Because <laughs> the curiosity is there, right? I feel the same way too. Like, I just want to. Yeah, it's. it's, it's strictly one million percent all about like trying everything where I have a little collector's thing in me where I really want to like own like this masterpiece of library one day right where for him it's one million percent just to try yeah who's that Mike Mike oh really yeah 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 for I have a little bit of a collector in me he he doesn't give a shit he just wants to try anything and everything that's, that's awesome. you know yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I wish I wish I was more like that. I just I feel like I don't have the finances to be like that. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. And, and and honestly, he he makes a decent living, but it's not like he makes a ton. But yeah. I remember, you guys remember the Karazawa sample we did, the nineteen sixty four one. Uh yes yes yeah. I do remember that yeah uh, uh, I think that that sample was like twenty four hundred bucks and I he got it he, he he had to try it. Wow, that's insane. That's <laughs> and and he's a happily married guy with kids, isn't he? Uh, is he not? <laughs> yeah, he is. He's uh, not spending much money on them, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so a couple guys in the chat just saying that the label looks a little too sharp yeah. for an eighty-year-old bottle. Um, yeah, Kevin saying looks the label looks like barbecue sauce <laughs> from the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, if so, that is real. And you gave me like an over under ten thousand. I probably would have been like, no, it was higher than that. Yeah, I'm surprised. Yeah, the it seems like the the price tag was low, fifty one hundred bucks for something like that, where it could be just be a one of a kind whiskey that you know you're never gonna see ever again. That's that's why when I'm if I'm buying something like that, like you know Angus that does uh, reviews on Whiskey Fund now. Yeah. He, he used to run an auction house, and it, I, I want someone like that to analyze the bottle before I'm buying it at auction. So, like a legit auction house, there's people analyzing for fakes, and 99% of the time, they know if it's if it's real or not. So that's yeah. why I'm a little more hesitant to buy something off Facebook versus an auction. Absolutely, yeah. There, you run a huge risk buying privately through groups like that, because um, yeah, it's so easy. Well, not easy to make a fake, but you don't have the auction house with your back kind of inspecting the bottle, making sure the seller's reputable, et cetera, et cetera. Um, a lot of times those guys on those groups do ask for references. So if you are well known in those groups, people will vouch for you. Um, yeah. I'm sure with that bottle, it was probably from someone who was reputable, but where did they get it? They, they could have purchased it from someone who was not reputable, right? So absolutely, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. It's hard yeah. to know. That's the thing. 
So yeah, um, we'll see. I'll see if I can see any more information about that. If the guy, what he does with it, if it goes back up for sale or, or what happens with that bottle. But I'd love to see, uh, trace that bottle and see where it goes. Um, next up in whiskey news real quick, um, something new from uh, Redbreast. They are coming out with a new dream cask. So I don't know if you've had the original one, Narby, or not. The original was uh, 32 year old. Yeah, so this one is coming in at 20 years old. It contains four different barrels that were all married together in a PX. So you got two second fill X bourbons, one PX, one Oloroso. Those are all married into a PX butt. Um, ages 20 to 33 years old. Um, only available to the Birdhouse Club members which I guess is their group, 52.2% uh, ABV, only 924 bottles. They are retailing for 380 euros a piece. Okay, I'm sorry, but, like, where does Redbreast get off? Like, <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're putting together, like, a 300-milliliter bottle, right? Like, whoa, 470, no. I think it's 500 milliliters. 500-milliliter yeah. bottle for... Over seven hundred dollars, American or no? Mm, three a less. euro is like it's not even that. Okay, it's so like six hundred. It's like four hundred. Whatever it is, it's way too much for a twenty-year-old red breast. Like that's bonkers. Like, <laughs> who do they think they are? Now I've heard awesome reviews about the yeah. first one. The thirty-two. The 32, 32 I've heard. I've heard great, incredible but... things about the first one, but you have you go to any distillery, try a thirty-two-year-old. They're gonna be awesome now. Now because they did, now because they did so well with the thirty-two year old, they they think they can do this with the one year old. And, and I think that's what it is. I think the thirty-two year old probably was very very good, and I think this one's gonna be average. But that's kind of what I'm hearing. But I, I haven't tried either one. Right. Okay. There is some thirty-three year old whiskey in there, right? Yeah, twenty to thirty-three years of age. I don't know. And Vito's probably yelling at me right now because <laughs> he absolutely loves that 32. So, yeah, year. Vito's commenting, uh, the 32-year-old, uh, still to this day, is the only whiskey that made him cry when he tasted it. Um, yeah. So the 32-year-old, still available in auctions. I've seen it go for around 1,100 pounds. Um, that bottle was just limited to 816 total produce. And the new one, uh, 924. Yeah, I decided to skip skip on it for for that amount of money. I I rather put it towards uh, an, an old spring bank, but I haven't tried it. I don't know how good it is, but I've never tried an Irish whiskey that's as good as old spring bank. So that's mm -hmm. where my money usually goes. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. I I that's an easy pass for me. Like, not. I need to get some old spring bank. <laughs> um, if I could buy that for the retail price, I probably would. Uh, I would too. Retail, I would, but I I, I never had a chance. Yeah, I I would I would be interested to see what retail was on the original because if they're selling this one for three eighty, um, I think it was like four fifty if I'm not wrong, but uh, someone someone can correct me on that. Okay. Yeah, so still not. You know, saying if I tried the thirty two, I would change my mind, and he might be right. Mm -hmm. He might be right. I mean, I've heard amazing things from that bottle, so we'll see. Guys, am I showing up super blurry? I feel I, I, when I'm looking on the screen, I'm showing up blurry. Yeah, yeah you, you are, are showing you're, up. You're, you're very blurry. pixelated. I don't know if it's your internet connection or what. It might be internet, but the first time we connected, it was perfect, and then the second time around, we connected, it got a little blurry. Yeah, it's going so back. I apologize about like that. You'll, I don't know if or not. you'll clear up for a little bit, and then it'll get a little bit blurry again. Mm. Okay, yeah. Cause what I'm seeing is like pure blur. <laughs> <laughs> Too much whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> um, one last thing, uh, as far as whiskey news is concerned, um, new Octomore coming out, being released at the Fizil, is that how you pronounce it? Festival is happening, Fiz Fizil? Fizil, yeah. Okay. Um, this is the Octomore Event Horizon, which is the oldest Octomore ever released from the distillery. It's a 12-year-old, uh, Exo de Rosso XPX cast. Just limited to 2,000 bottles, 162.6 ppm, which is more on the medium to low side for Octomores. Um, they're going for 175 pounds per bottle, and they're on sale right now. It's uh, unfortunate because we'll I never, we'll never see it. We want it so bad. Um, <laughs> so I want, I, I'm a big Octomore fan, although if you look at the Octomore 8.1, 
It was aged eight years, mm -hmm. higher than a normal five. It was one of my least favorite Octomores. I didn't think the extra age did it any favors. Um, this one being 12 years old, who knows, right? I guess we'll see once the reviews start dropping on this one. Um, but yeah, another bottle for the auction market that's probably going to go for a lot of money. Yeah. I'm really excited to never be able to get that bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm probably, if someone's got it in a raffle, I'm buying a spot, that's for sure. I want to get my chance to win that thing. It'd be nice if it was like a poker game. Sure. Either way, <laughs> I want to I wanna win that bottle because, uh, you know, I'm an Octomore fan. Yeah. and uh, I really want you to win that bottle, too. Event Horizon <laughs> is such a cool name for a bottle. That is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Great movie, too. <laughs> I don't know if we're great, but it's great. I like the movie. Um so yeah, there it is for Whiskey News. Narby, what are you sipping on over there now? Uh, well, I've kind of been sipping on it all, and I'm like, I already <laughs> buzz right now. I had some of this. This Highland Park is like pure Highland Park characteristics. At 33, 33 years old, Rob, I apologize. It's only 44.8%. I know you like your whiskeys at like 70%, but... Uh, <laughs> But uh, it's, it's really, really good. It's just velvet on the palate. It's super, super delicious. I had some of this, and man, this is just, this is amazing, Springbank. It's the only current bottling of Springbank where I get notes of old Springbank. And unfortunately, old Springbank, like this one, is over $9,000 now. It's pretty crazy. Wow. That's insane. $90,000. So that's $99,000. Oh, oh. <laughs> I, I heard 90. I heard 90. <laughs> Even still, nine thousand is is a quite a steep number. Um, you said that boutique, that boutique Springbank. Um, I'm sorry, not the Springbank. The uh, what was the boutique one again? The boutique is Springbank. It's a twenty-one okay, yeah. year old Springbank. The boutique Springbank. You said that the auction prices on that were around two fifty, and now they're up to five hundred. Is that right? The last I saw is five hundred, but you know, depending on which auction you go to, it really, really varies. Um, I'll let you know if I ever see it for cheaper. Because 21-year-old spring bank, port cask, mature, oh, yeah. that sounds like right in our wheelhouse. Yeah, we're getting that. If right? You it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you, know, you remember the bottle I told you to get, the dumpy 80s? Uh, yes. Yeah. That's yeah. the one to get. The 21. Yeah, that's, 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 all. That's, that's, that's actual old spring bank. And you can right. still get those for like 800 pounds. Yeah, so that one uh, we saw it at auction. It was it went for I think right around a thousand pounds, plus auction fees, plus shipping. We got, just we yeah. couldn't justify it at the time. Um, got a little stupid. You know what? You know what would be cheaper? Just come to California. Yeah, <laughs> I think I agree. Work. Is that an invitation? I agree. Yeah, um, that sounds like you guys heard it. That's live. Uh, we're coming. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess I'll tell your wife. I have her on on Instagram now, so she messaged. Yeah, me. yeah, she told me. Uh, yeah, she told me. Yeah. Yes. By the way, you guys are more than welcome to come. We'll lay it all out. You guys will try everything, man. Anytime. That's awesome. That is wicked. I am totally gonna. And okay. the the okay. invitation <laughs> goes both ways, buddy. But I'm. I'm we can't. <laughs> There's nothing good that he wants. I mean, <laughs> yeah. If you want to come up here and drink some regular release stuff, we got lots of that. <laughs> <laughs> Great place on the I'm gonna visit. You know, one of the cool, we one got of the cool port lock in the Lakewood that you would like cool. to try. Cool. One of the coolest parts about owning really really nice whiskey is drinking it with someone else who will appreciate it. So I love having people over. That really appreciate it. Unfortunately, 99% of people that come over, they just want to try it because it's expensive. They don't even like it. They like the Glenfiddich 12 better with ice cubes. But, oh, my God, yeah. No. Not yeah, sure. but, you know, <laughs> absolutely. If you guys ever want to come to Cali, I know. We'll, we'll get together with Mike. We'll have a great, great time. That would be super epic. Would love for that to happen. Absolutely. Anytime. Let me know, man. Um, well, one last thing we got to do tonight, and that is give away some of this Barora. Um, I'm going to do a one ounce sample of the Barora 38 to a lucky participant who's hung around in this chat for <laughs> two hours now going strong. Um, I'm going to throw out a question. It's going to be Barora related. So here it is again. First person to answer correctly in the chat will win one ounce sample of the Barora 38-year-old 
Um, yes, Kevin, you are allowed to compete for this one, even though you win too much of the stuff all the time. <laughs> um, all right, here it is. What year was the Brewer Distillery mothballed? What year did it close? Do you guys know this? No. <clears throat> Answers coming in. Here we come. No, 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 nine, not 1968. That was the year it got its name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 69 is when he got his name. Uh, I think we got a correct answer there. Uh, Jason Coates, 83. 83 correct. is correct. 1983 is the year that Brora stopped producing and it was mothballed that year. Um, plans for it to open up again next year, 2020. They're going to start uh, producing whiskey again. So exciting to see that in 35 years from now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, we got to wait a while. <laughs> um, but yeah, kind of cool that uh, yeah, show is going to bust the, it's like Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory, right? It's like it's shut down and now it's coming back. So uh, we'll see. So congratulations to, um, who won again? Jason. Jason Coates. Jason Coates. Jason Coates, yeah. I'm going to pour it right now. You guys uh, talk about yourselves. Willy Wonka. Some old man somewhere is going to be just jumping out of bed for the first time in 35 years. <laughs> Tour the new Brewer facility. Um, I'm going to put this on camera just so you guys know it's actually coming into the bottle. That's actually going to be coming to my house. <laughs> We're going to pour some Game of Thrones clan for you guys. <laughs> I think uh, I think Jason Coates would know the difference between. Well, we'll see. We'll <laughs> <laughs> see. That's not so evil. <laughs> what? Remember the Belvini Doublewood? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't even tell what Belvini Doublewood is. So what do, what do I know? Speaking of Belvini, have you opened the batch eight yet? I have not. I have not opened the batch eight. I still got the batch six going. Um, yeah, I got a lot of bottles that I really want to open. Jason, there you go. There's your sample. I will ship that off to you. I think I have your address, but if I don't, just email me again, supersocialclub at gmail.com, and I will ship that off to you. Um, uh, I, yeah. Sorry. Oh, the revision, Arby? Uh, I'd be willing to bet money that when you open the Batch 8, it's going to be a top three whiskey you've ever had. Wow. Yeah. Based on Just based on me uh, knowing the bottles that you've ranked the highest, I think right. I would really, really appreciate that one. Wow, that's the most recent release? No, so this is the 1401 Batch 8. Um, the Batch 6 is the one I have open now. Mm -hmm. You've tried that. Yeah. Um, I think Batches 3 and 8 are the two highly reviewed ones from the 1401s. Is that right, Narvi? 3 and 8 are the two ones? It, yeah, 3, 5, and 8. And I was, 3 is on, on another planet, but it's also double the price at auction. Yeah. But the best buy is 8. Actually, when people ask me what's the best bottle to buy at auction, I tell them Baldini Ton Fourteen One Batch Eight. You have it. Nice. Yeah. Sweet. I'm super excited for that. Uh, Jason Coates, just uh, trying to pay for a sample here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate it, man. Uh, cheers. Um, super interested to know your thoughts on this one. So let me know once you uh, crack the sample open what you're getting on it. Uh, Narby, we've lost um, visual on you. We can still hear you, but we're just getting um, no video. Oh, really? Um, why am I not surprised? Can you Maybe, see me now? What could happen is your battery is running low I on the phone. Plugged, yeah, we just plugged it in. Is it good now? No, we're still just getting your icon. Um, if you put, like, make sure it's not on, like, battery saving mode or whatever. Oh, okay, okay. Give me a minute. I'm actually going to try to flip the camera, too, because I can't stand this delay. Okay. <laughs> um, thanks for joining us, guys. I think we'll start, like, to wrap it up. We'll give Narby a second. Um, but what an awesome live. Yeah. I'm super happy that we got to crack these bottles uh, with you guys tonight because for sure, and good I, company makes it nice, right? I don't think we said it, but congratulations on 10,000. Yeah. 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 I wish I had something to cheers. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh, Mark with a super chat. Thank you. Yeah, 10,000 subs. Um, 
<laughs> Let's go pallet, man. Uh, cheers to that. If you're gone. Um, yeah, really let, I mean, I'm kind of, like I said it before, the one hit wonder of the whiskey tube community with that Johnny Walker video, just completely blowing up. Um, but yeah, hundred thousand or sorry, 10,000 subs. Um, super fortunate to have that reach and, uh, yeah, to, uh, to the next 10,000, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's too bad we couldn't raise ten thousand dollars tonight on the channel. Be <laughs> <laughs> to go to auction. Go world. straight to the auction world. <laughs> just give it to Narby. Just buy yeah. me everything that you think's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's go around the room. Um, I mentioned before um, Spirit and Oak. Why don't you just tell people what that is? Uh, how yeah. to sign up? The link is in the description for this video, so they can check it out. But just go oh, ahead. Cool. Um, yeah, so Spirit and Oak is just the Instagram account I started to not annoy people when I posted about whiskey stuff. Um, and then kind of halfway into doing just the Instagram thing is I started up a booze letter, which is my weekly newsletter about not just whiskey, but all things uh, booze related. So there's beer news, um, wine stuff. In fact, it comes out Friday morning and I got lazy with it last night. I don't always do that. But uh, if you guys are interested in subscribing, it's boozletter.com, and I'll put out an email tomorrow. Yeah, you can check out, uh, follow the link below to go to spiritnote.com, and you can get it from there, right? Yeah, spiritnote.com or boozletter.com, just okay. to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's like it's like a short two-minute read, just kind of gets you up to date with like all the things happening, um, whiskey, booze, beer, yeah. whatever related. Yeah, I try to make it fun. Um, and yeah, like once a week for five minutes, you can kind of get caught up on what's going on. So, yeah, yeah awesome. Uh, Rob, what, uh, what are you going to say to these people? Coming out with a best 25 year old whiskey video coming out soon. Um, I'm hoping to have that out Tuesday, but it might be the following week just because this is whiskey in the six <laughs> <laughs> never make promises um so you're gonna rank what the top your top six 25 year old whiskeys yeah wow okay. yeah and there, there will be others mentioned but yeah okay that's epic cool that's epic. and jasper do you have anything to plug no i'm just drinking <laughs> <laughs> i'm the porn star <laughs> Um, Narby, have you fixed your issue? I don't think so. You still are just. I don't know. Can you guys see me? No, unfortunately, we we can't. No worries. No worries. Uh, you guys can hear me though, right? We Honestly. can hear you. Yeah. Right on. Right on. Yeah, it's just uh, on YouTube. Malt reviews. Uh, my my best friend Mike and I do a lot of a lot of whiskey reviews and uh, in our chase for the ultimate malts. So appreciate you having me on. Congrats on 10K, man! You're killing it. Yeah, no, it was a, it was an honor for me to have you on the channel. Uh, really appreciate you coming on, guys. Go check out Cast Strength again. Link in the description. You can go uh, subscribe to their channel. Go back and watch all the reviews. <laughs> they have epic, epic stuff. It's 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 something to see for sure. Absolutely. Mall reviews. Mall reviews. Mall reviews. Yeah, mall reviews. Sorry. It's because Vito is yapping all the time. Go to Cash Strength. Go to Cash Strength too. Vito's talking mad shit in the chat. <laughs> uh, yeah, mall reviews is the link there. You won't find Cash Strength. But maybe I'll throw it up just for fun anyway because uh, those guys do good stuff as well um thanks everyone for joining us really appreciate it um as always have a good one cheers, cheers.